You're listening to Hair of the Dogcast, a proud part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. Check out Hair of the Dogcast and all of Greenlit shows at greenlitpodcast.com. Everybody, welcome to episode 91 of Hair of the Dogcast, TMNT me ASAP. What do you think? I, I'm, I'm in. Okay. I'm, We're going to yes. talk turtles today because rumor has it, what is it, uh, unsubstantiated rumor that we have a turtle expert among us. Cowbunga boys. That's right. Welcome Uh-oh. to the Josh cast this week, baby. <laughs> True. You're in for a ride. But before that, before, before that, my name is Tom. I'm one of your hosts. And who else besides tom is here today let's start with you it's me i'm brad i'm here you are brad and you i have brad. been at home for a while i was quarantined and i've been full-time playing virtual reality uh, on the psvr when i say full-time hours i have done 40 hours within like five days you're like the lawnmower man Ooh. yeah that's some skill I uh, only play VR for about a half hour, 45 he's minutes Jeff at Fahey. a time. It's so my Pierce browser. My, the realities are blending together, and I'm waking up, and I'm like moving my hands like this, where you just, they're either open or closed, like in the VR. <laughs> what is real? What is not? I took the red pill. Um, well, Brad, thank you for uh, being in reality. Or is it? Yeah, we're not sure anymore. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> and next is Boom. Oh, hello, it's me, Josh, uh, your one-stop turtle shop. We're going to talk turtle shop with all of each other Are you later. excited? Ah, I think I'm going to vibe really well with this cast. <laughs> Do you remember, I, was it episode two that we actually talked it's about? Two, I turtle? think it was three. Was it three? I think it was three. We, we did had a, a good turtle talk. We reviewed uh, TMNT 2, uh, Out of the Ooze or Out of the oh, Shadows? Uh, Secret of the Ooze. Out of the Shadows. Out of the Shadows, okay. Out of the yeah. Shadows, yeah. Uh, which was not well received no, by a lot of people. It was better than the first. Go better back and listen first. to it. I think we had differing opinions on it. But, some uh, hot takes. We had some hot mm-hmm. takes. Yeah, really guys, hot. It was four in the morning. You guys were much younger back then, too. Like Ghostbusters. I don't care. Whoa. I don't no, we did do the Ghostbusters one, though. We don't need to talk about that. No, but I want to go back <laughs> and listen to that. Brad, you should. You should. Put your uh, pants back on. If you want to hear Josh. Take off the VR guy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I held back. If you want to hear Josh at the angriest I've ever heard. I'm hey, not even kidding. Tom, just stop it. <laughs> Stop it! It's early. Who else is here? <laughs> yes, and finally, it's supposed to be a pleasant. It's cast. me. I, I've come up with like a new like list of titles for myself: uh, Juniper Jester, Quinine Cowboy, Dylan Hoff. I, I like, like Juniper Cow- Jester. That yeah. I like that alliteration. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah, I think it works for me, and I think I'm gonna roll with that for a while. I was right. gonna suggest Duncan Dylan. Like you like <laughs> slam March Madness. The world's is running off. on. I figured Duncan you want to dunk Dylan. on most like that Al Pacino commercial. I yeah, I don't like to brag about my hoop skills, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to avoid that today. All right, here the got a triple double. <laughs> Oh my God. Hair of the Dogcast is a podcast about video games and beer. We drink real live beer on this podcast. And this episode is brought to you by executive producers Ryan Kristenick, Kip, to whom I say Kip, Kip, hooray, for leveling up to Jerry hey. Barkheimer, executive producer, Stannis. Good job, buddy. Thanks for your support. Brian Ward, Tyler Keller, t- Tyler, I'm sorry, Tyler Keller, Allison Smith, Kate Conti, and from the support of just the coolest dang listeners on the planet. You, I'm talking about you, dear listener. If you'd like to support, and thanks, mom. Actually, Um, if you'd like to support our stuff here (laughs) on Hair of the Dogcast, go to Patreon.com/slash Hair of the Dogcast and check out our Patreon page. It's just oozing with tears for any budget. Dylan loves it. And, uh, you know, some of our more recent episodes, we did our last dog cast was a roundtable uh, celebration of Zelda Breath of the Wild, our last Raw Dogs. We had on Jack Packard from Red Letter Media mm-hmm. and the Wonderful Escape is done awesome. to talk about some Nintendo toys. Mm-hmm. That was cool. And it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, go ahead and check out our cool Patreon. Maybe it's not cool. It I is very like, cool. I feel we have like, the coolest Patreon in the I feel the like I'm biased when I say that. Just check out our Patreon. Yeah, if you, if there are literally the dozens of us. You can us. hang out with us on our Discord and just, just talk yes. turtle shop all yes. day long. <laughs> you want to join our Discord. You do not Take want to Take me not, to the turtle shop. You do not want to not be in our Discord because <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But if you don't have any uh, turtle bucks to spare, don't worry. Don't despair. We accept pizza. We do accept pizza. 
and recommendations ju- to and friends. bits of beers. <laughs> yes, yes. And Josh is well. just talking about why is there no pizza app? You know, Shh, Tom, you're gonna put it out there, okay. and someone's gonna steal no, my pizza app. No, to, no, to self. I just will a edit pizza this review out. app. I'm sure. There's, well, let's there's not forget one. the New Year's resolution that I gave Josh, which was make a pizza, in comparison to permanent body transformation, which he gave me. <laughs> That's right. You were happy to do it. I'm so happy to do it. I have the tattoo scheduled. <laughs> I'm gonna do it too, guys. Next year is gonna be a bitch. <laughs> it's, so. We're coming for you, Josh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look out. Uh, you're gonna hey, be an amputee I, I by the time it's done. I gave you non-harming option, and you cho- chose the. Where? What was one? Wear a Kingdom Hearts wig for a month straight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm all in for yeah, that. That was a long time ago, Brad. I don't remember. <laughs> all I have to do is draw a metal cover. Right. <laughs> Josh, it looks like you brought some beer. Let's get the beer uh, cranking here because we got a lot to get through. We got one pint of beer for pizza. At least that's what it says. It is a lager from Blackstack, collab with Bricksworth Beer Company. Blackstack is uh, becoming probably my favorite brewery out of Minnesota. And this is just a good. Lager. From where in Minnesota? Brad knows all the places, so we can tell you if it's... I know a lot of them. Where uh, is this? Rochester? Is that, Minneapolis? If it's thumbs up or thumbs down. I don't think it's Rochester. St. Paul. St. Paul. And the failed Saint, mascot, St. Paul, your best friend. St. Paul. St. Paul. St. Paul. It's like uh, Buddy Christ in Dogma. I was <laughs> just thinking Buddy Christ, actually. <laughs> uh, while Josh is pouring, somebody have any uh, cool stories about the, what they've been doing besides playing VR? Uh... Car got broken into. <laughs> Jesus, um, man. <laughs> which is fine. I'm it's sorry. I was sorry to hear that. That's crazy. Because no, that's actually true. That did happen. Yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah. Uh, what's cheers to Dylan's car sure, being sure, broken sure. into? Fine, fine. Uh, <laughs> I feel bad about this. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, did I mention this beer is actually called Side of Ranch? You know, it doesn't taste like ranch. Mm-mm. Well, there's no ranch no. in it. Mm. This one is very um, tinny. tinny. I like the black cans. Yeah, it has a black can with a white label. It looks nice. Hmm. <laughs> One pint of beer for pizza. It says it on there, literally. <laughs> really? Can you yeah. actually trade it in someone? No, it's a beer for to drink with for pizza. pizza. Definitely. <laughs> for it pairs Rose well. Pizza. I was just I was debating the exchange rate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is your car, it got broken into. Mm-hmm. They broke a window. Busted a window, jacked the column a bit, trying to, trying to get it started. But to no avail? Uh, someone came out and yelled at him. I have, oh, I have wonderful neighbors. Walker's Point for life, baby. Fuck yeah, man. They got them. Uh, we're currently building them a little gift basket because uh, I don't think everyone in the world is so nice as to look out for their fellow neighbor. I'm, 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 I'm fine with it, honestly. Like, there's hey, a part of me that is so like crazy that every time something like this happens, I'm kind of like, you know what? I had it too good. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was I, time for the world to shit on me. Then I get to kind of be like, all right, put me back in my place a little. Uh, please, daddy, give me more. <laughs> right. And that's when it becomes a problem. Ooh, it hurts. Yeah. Oh, that hurts a little too much. All right. Exactly. Now, yeah. I'm, yeah. now I'm back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's where I am right now. Uh, I did a huge workout in Ring Fit yesterday. Good for you. Because I'm a fat slob. No, you're not. Now I'm getting it taken But you're getting Ring Fit. Absolutely. Ring well, Fit's no joke, man. That'll, that'll do it. I'm sore all over, so I'm actually drinking You'll some get rye whiskey as, as well fuck. today. There you go. Dylan's double fisting. Dylan the double fister. The oh. juniper jester. The double fester. Dylan the double fister. The double fister. <laughs> Duncan Dylan. Are you implying my hands are small? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Um, does anybody else have any stories they'd like to share with the group before we get into uh, the Tom, news? Tom, is there something I'm not aware of that I did are that you, you know? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. We went out on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. That huh? was... that w- Was that crazy? Yeah. Yeah, good times. That was wild. Remember that? Yep. Of course, we stayed six feet away from our fellow man, masked up at all times. Yep. Well, I got that kind of mask we can drink through the mask. They call it a- You're spilling everywhere when you do that, but it is funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's all about the good times. Yeah. It's like a fucking Jason mask. <laughs> right through the, he just has the a, mouth mask, holes. a mask that's a sponge, and he just dips it in. <laughs> Well, that's, my that's not a bad mask. idea. <laughs> Somebody buy that shit. Yeah, put that in Sky Mall. Uh, all right. Someone drowns mm-hmm. to death in it. <laughs> Guys, we got a lot of news to go through. Yeah, so let's I'm do thinking it. we're going to have ourselves a lightning round. What we're going to do is I'm going to read off headlines. Whoa. This is going to go down. And anytime anyone wants to stop and really talk about something, you just let me know. Okay? I thought you were going to say, stop. Shut the fuck up, Tom. Next topic. Just wow. that how like it's going to go? Just like that. Stop. Um, Stop. Hammer time. It, go. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. That was fun. Whatever. This is going to be fun, guys. Cool. This is going to be fun. 
It's not going to be that fun. It's probably just going to turn out to be a regular news sure. section anyway. Stop. Huh? Don't, bo- don't poo-poo it before we yeah. do it. Let's get more. F- All right. Don't- headline one. All right. This is going back. We haven't had a dog cast, one. a news dog cast uh, for two dog casts. So we've got some stuff to catch up on. So news topic number one. Sony confirms that it is working on next-gen PlayStation VR platform. This information came from an interview conducted by GQ with Sony Interactive CEO Jim Ryan. It will supposedly connect to PS5 with a single cord to simplify setup and improve ease of use while enabling a high-fidelity visual experience, according to Hideki Nishino, Sony's head of PlayStation platform and planning. Anybody want to talk about the next VR platform? I'll take this one. PS5. Um, yes, you are a VR expert now. Uh, this is exciting and fine. The, the PSVR is a pretty good piece of uh, technology. It's reasonably priced and a nice entry point for a lot of people. The current PlayStation. Uh, For those that are not console users, it is fantastic. And their games have only gotten better. This new PSVR 2, whatever they do wind up calling it, will be a fun investment for those ready to make the jump. Single cord is nice. And I think it's only looking up. Don't buy a PSVR 1 if you... Haven't got it yet. Just wait for the two. Probably, yeah, probably good, solid advice. Uh, This new unit uh, is supposedly supposed to enhance everything from, quote, resolution and field of view to tracking and input. And gone, I'm sorry, RIP to the the move controllers. They better have something They've had a good decade of... Oh, they're going to have some flippy whippies. They'll probably try to do their facsimile of what the Oculus has because those controllers are actually like pretty legit to quit and they have analog sticks. So yeah, that's the biggest, that's what I assumed. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about the VR next, we will, next yes. week, but yeah. yeah. An analog stick and those fuckers would have done so much for them. It's the only reason I never wanted to use them. Yep. That's why. Yeah. The next raw dogs will be a VR centric yep. episode. That's awesome. Yeah. I hope they get maybe probably not, but it would be great if they could just figure out hand tracking. That would be like amazing. some sort of like a power glove. Yes. Yeah, like if there's a well, keyboard on the side too that can make things easier to enter. Don't give Nintendo ideas, um, no. The unit is still Nintendo. in development <laughs> and will be coming in the future, future, future. So don't expect anything in 2021, they said. Also, they need to sell some PS5s first uh, and really kind of. They're not really having trouble with that, though. Get a good base. The second they're available, they're gone. Yeah. And they we'll won't talk be for a while. Because there's people that still have them in the box in their closet. Actually, Tom's got it right out there. It's right next to the. What? Did you the open it? Window. What? No, no. Oh, it's, it's in the box. No. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not in the. Closet. But I'm feeling it. It's going to happen soon. Uh, um, you can feel what are you it. Doing huh? after feel... the cast. Um... Yeah. We're locking him in the bathroom and opening his PlayStation. <laughs> no! <laughs> I could, like slit my wrist. <laughs> okay. All right. Continuing with Sony, we got more Sony news. Uh, Sony is also going to continue bringing more PlayStation titles to PC, starting with a PC version of Motorcycle Zombie Apocalypse game, Days Gone, due out sometime this spring. Uh, in the same interview, Ryan cited the success of the PC port of Horizon Zero Dawn and said, quote, there's an opportunity to expose those great games to a wider audience and recognize the economics of game development, which are not always straightforward. The cost of making games goes up with each cycle as the caliber of IP has improved. Also, our ease of making it available to non-console owners has grown, so it's a fairly straightforward decision for us to make. Also uh, known as, hey, game development is really expensive, and uh, we want to sell more copies. We've made all our money that we could off selling this on the PS4, so let's uh, give it to a new audience. I've heard what Days Gone is so mediocre that it like borderlines on being awful. It's, it's Horizon Zero Dawn things. could be cool on the PC. I like Horizon Zero Dawn. It already, yeah. yeah, it's already I've heard there. That from um, people, and it's, it's, it's a very good. Great. It's good. Uh, I bet you the the next one's just gonna blow it out of the water. I think it's gonna. Take what it was missing, figure it out, and it it might be like you know it might be on that Breath of the Wild scale to a lot of people. Yep, I, I don't know if it's going to be on that scale, but I do have faith in. They came out the same month. Are they planning on bringing Parappa the Rapper to computers then? Because that's if my they make first a new thought. one. Yeah. Um, no, Parappa the Rapper Adventure Island collab. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So right now it seems like Open they are world. focusing on the latter latter day PlayStation 4 games. So I'm assuming God of War has got to be on tap uh, to come to PCs as well. They didn't, they didn't mention no. Death Stranding in that article. Yeah, they didn't. But, I, you know, that's like a second party game. So, But it was Sony exclusive. It was Sony exclusive. Yeah. 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 I'm currently quite enjoying that right now. So yeah. I'm on a little bit of a kind of all I think about. <laughs> I think when I think of uh, Days Gone, I 
do kind of have the same vibes with uh, Death Stranding for some reason. I'm sure Death Stranding is better. Because it's oh. Daryl and D- Days Gone is based on a character that looks like Daryl that, on that's the it. motorcycle in, in, vi- in Zombieland. A character from The Walking Dead. Uh, yes. In Death Stranding, uh, the main character is played by Norman Reedus from that show. A.K.A. Daryl. The famous actor from Boondock Saints 2. Daryl. Yes. Yes. You know, I think... <laughs> The video game version of the Kevin Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon is going to be like the Six Degrees of Norman Reedus one day. Honestly, he's so cool in this game. <laughs> I, it's just my favorite performance of his. Because <laughs> he doesn't talk. He doesn't talk a lot, but when he does... You listen. He kind of just talks like this. Does he have the Boondock Saints, like, horrible Irish accent? No. Okay, good. It's very American. Uh, I think it's great that Sony wants to make more money. Good for them. Yes, yes. perfect. All right, moving on. I don't know, Brad. I don't know if <laughs> don't that's know a good idea. <laughs> yeah, we should just stop right now. Um, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's another out-of-touch politician trying to ban violent video games. From IGN, Chicago Democratic Representative Marcus Evans Jr. introduced a bill to amend a 2012 law that prevents the sale of, quote-unquote, violent video games to minors to now be a full and complete ban of sale of all violent video games for everybody. Uh, this won't go thing. anywhere and fuck this guy. I, I'll say this. I'll say this one thing. Have you guys heard yes, about I, this? I, I, I read that. Uh, one thing I will say straight out of the gate is that like what Brad said, nothing's going to happen with this. It's just more crap of trying to appeal to a certain base that they already have. And also, I, read. I probably don't want to read another. I don't even want to hear about this in the news ever again, because I'll be honest with you. This is where First Amendment rights actually come into play. <laughs> and meanwhile, and fuck we, anyone who tries to push that against me. Our kids are suffering from loot boxes and sanctioned gambling from big money, forcing it down their throats. Yeah. Where politicians uh, should be focused is banning loot boxes and child gambling. But no, the naughty games make them a bad boy. What's yep. that? Pe- Pepe Pew. What's, what's your name? <laughs> yeah. Most people have sex. Not as many people gamble. Uh, I think the. The obvious target is gambling. You ever gamble a lot? Mm. It can be like sex. Uh, fuck I, politicians. <laughs> moving I on. Love gambling. I guess <laughs> the catalyst of this legislation was due to an increase in the rate of carjacking in Chicago. You know, so obviously games yeah, like that Grand was, Theft Auto. Well, it wouldn't be linked to like poverty that or. or that, first of all, that like doesn't teach return you how of Jack to, Thompson. That doesn't teach you how to carjack. <laughs> no, the game doesn't. Teach it teaches you how I'm how pushing to circle. It teaches Why you how to ride a rocket pack I'm over circle fucking sharks. Imagine getting busted trying to break into a house, and you just have the lock pick from Skyrim. Like I keep turning it, and it doesn't go. <laughs> right. exactly. It doesn't open. Like, Maybe it's because I'm using clothespins. Every, everybody's dressed like Trevor all yeah. of a sudden yeah. in Chicago. <laughs> <all> cool, <laughs> Shirek. Uh, but I agree. I mean, this is some archaic shit, and it's like every few years there's. It's a broken record. Like these fucking politicians yeah. are just looking for an easy scapegoat. Yeah. This politician, video games though, are just there. They're getting publicity. We're talking about them. Their name is in the the eth- like the ether now. And uh, unfortunately, this will cause a name for himself, and he might get further ahead. So fuck Probably him. Not. Here's my editorial. If you think video games are the root of your problem, chances are you are the root of your problem, sir. It might just be good dumb. day. They're Hot keeping, take. Hot take. Good day. They are keeping the world. Fuck you, Tom. Calm down. <laughs> Put God. the chair down, Tom. Video games wow. keep I'm us from doing those angry stuff. Tom, you to jack my car. <laughs> right. <laughs> You've been playing too much video games. <laughs> like I said, I'm almost as angry as Josh was when he saw the, uh, Shut the up, Ghostbusters. Shut up, Tom. Put Moving. the Wii Fit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. That was a good discourse. Yeah. Good discourse, everybody. Good job. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to congratulate ourselves during the podcast. <laughs> I'm or sorry, should we? <laughs> Moving forward, this is this is the only this is the only time I ever feel good in my life. So. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to congratulate everything. Uh, good talking, boys. Let's keep yeah. going. Next. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Next. Anthem. Next. Uh oh. Anthem 2.0. Uh oh. Has officially been canceled, guys. I'm sorry, Dylan. I'm sorry. Uh, pretty much, Man. pretty much putting the nail in the coffin for this uh, fledgling franchise. Project Dylan. Yeah, it was done from the start. That was the uh, That's the code name. Yeah. Uh, high hopes. Anthem Next was supposed to be the Anthem 2.0, quote unquote, retooling, reimagining project that it was undertaken by Bioware for the the better, taken king of its destiny yes for the better part of last year as had been previously reported by bloomberg 
The Anthem Bioware team was scheduled to give a presentation to EA executives with the fruits of their redevelopment efforts to determine whether or not they had the go-ahead to proceed with development and put the Anthem 2.0 into full production or cancel it outright. Obviously, they gave the uh, the thumbs down. Sorry to all you who were worked on. Tom, does do you know anyone that plays that game? I, I almost started I it, but then like it looked like a pretty lengthy character creation. I'm like, I'm not putting more than 10 seconds to play this game. I think that's how many people play this game. I've never played <laughs> it. When it was announced at E3, it was like the bell of the ball. Uh, it's got Iron Man movement. Yeah. That's what everyone seems to agree as being the best aspect of that game was apparently the traversal felt really cool and then everything else was just your yep. standard third person shooter loot fair and I think that's just not what people wanted yeah and that that E3 demo that kind of knocked people's socks off you know it came out later that as a lot of these demos are they just put it together I mean the game wasn't really even in development uh, they just made this this little demo that was the game so it, this turned out to be paperware almost it, it what I, what I'll say about it is the fact that I had heard, that we had heard that they were going to kind of try and reboot it a little. I immediately said right away, and I think I could go back and listen to it. I said, "That's not going to work. Mm-hmm. This isn't Destiny. Like they don't have like the bungee thing behind it to make this work." Anymore. Yeah, I would be curious to. I hope it leaks out or at least video. I would like to see what this was or what changes they made. You know I what I mean? Think, I don't think. A lot of I think they took everyone and they put them right on Dragon Age Four, yep. and they, they only kept a small group on this. It was doomed to start, and that's just a guess on my part. So I don't really know. But I'll say, meanwhile, uh, Anthem Two is being abandoned. Uh, Square Enix is double down. Like the Marvel game is fucking going to be great. We are sticking around. Yes. Just wait for us and. That yeah. looks like it's as doomed as Anthem 2 was looking. Yeah. 2.0, yeah. And speaking of the Marvel game... Um, that game sold well, though. That's the difference. I just, did it. I read an article, I think it was last week, where they, they're making it more difficult to level up in that game. Yes. And so I, <laughs> from what I was reading the other day, it's like the fun loop doesn't happen until you're high levels, and they're going to make it much more difficult to get to those levels To now. get to the fun? To get to the fun. <laughs> Sounds be, like a great idea. To be fair, that's exactly what Destiny always does. Every single time there's an expansion or any MMO or anything like that, they want to make this an MMO, but it's just not fucking possible. It's not going to happen. And mm. it's not a shooter, so there isn't that level of replayability to it. I watched a full playthrough. It was a short Let's Play. Of? Marvel's. Okay. Games. I prefer cosplay with Marvel series Yeah, to, oh. to Let's Plays. Um. Back to Anthem quickly. Sure. The Anthem game that exists today will be supported. I mean, just legacy support. You know, uh, they will support the live service, so you can still play it. Who knows for how long? But as you mentioned, Dylan, the team that was working on this uh, Anthem 2.0 has been redistributed to help with the new Dragon Age, uh, new Mass Effect games, as well as add support to Star Wars: The Old Republic. Uh, to piggyback off of what you just said, apparently because of the failure of games like this. They have decided to make Dragon Quest or Dragon Age Four non MMO centric. Yes, yeah, I read that too. Yeah, yeah, they took out the live service aspect Thank of it. Fuck, it's the only way I would play it because yeah. I don't even really like the world of Dragon Age all that much. So I'm like, I'm like, good <laughs> single player experience. I'm back in. I'll play it at least. You know, mm-hmm. exactly. That's the only thing that could have gotten me to do it. Take me to the Tower of Mages, the Tower of Magi. Circle. What? what are you guys talking about? <laughs> Dragon Moving Age forward. Man. <laughs> or Dragon Age ish. I can't remember. Sorry, all guys. That. I don't yeah. know anything about that <laughs> shit. It's okay. It's, it's all right. I understand. Josh, but you do know about beer and turtles, and right now we have beer. Turtle, what do we turtle. got? Well, actually, not a beer. Uh, we have a malt beverage. I was going to say, what do they consider? Fuck this shit. They, co- they, realized, they realized some of our fruited seltzers from Eagle Park were just not seltzers anymore. So they call it a hard smoothie. It's technically they put a malt beverage on the side. But, oh, no shit. Okay. Uh, so, mango and raspberry. Mango and ras. Oof. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have to drink that if you don't want, Tom. I know that you don't like good things. Tom it's not sour. Tom's a big it's mango. It's pretty subtle. Like fruits? Mango. Mango. Yeah, that's not my jam. But it's good. I mean, if it was, Speaking it would be jam. very good. This is nice. Yeah. It's like somebody squeezed an orange in a V8. 
But it gets you drunk. Just because it's Very visually good. reddish yeah, it's no doesn't mean it tastes here. like <laughs> Clam- clamato and tomato. Better than the Bud Light Bud Chilada or Michelada, that's for sure. Uh, <sighs> yeah, I, I drank that. I, I am dis- <laughs> I am disappointed sip. that while Carly had COVID, I didn't have the chance to give her a Bud Light um, Michelada or whatever to see what she could taste or smell <laughs> I like I should have brought one over. <laughs> yeah, I was Man. thinking about that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carly, <laughs> next time. Can you guys try uh, Untitled Arts uh, Michelada Sour? No, I never will. Kinda, I'll try it, but... It, they used a ton of Frank's Red Hot Sauce. Okay. It was hot. Mm. It was, was it? spicy. Oh, I could fuck with that part of yeah, it. Yeah, it, it was It was a light tartness with it. It was actually impressive. I, I wouldn't want a whole 16-ounce can. Let's beer bong it. But... Shit. God, yeah, no, it was, New Year's it resolution. wasn't bad. That shit was... Gravity bong. It was hot. It was good. It was For what it was, it was good. That uh, was last year. What else did we have coming down the lightning storm, Tom? Well, Brad, I'm glad you asked... Cyberpunk 2077's next big patch, Ooh. patch 1.2, had been delayed or has been delayed as a result of the data breach slash ransomware attack that occurred earlier uh, this year. I think last month, January. I, I don't know. It was. I think it was a month ago. It was, it was ran- maybe it was a ransom attack. Anyways, um, Mel Gibson. Yeah. So these people broke into uh, CD Projekt Red servers and stole all their source code, uh, personal information. Oh, yeah, dude. And right. pictures Said, of Keanu. And basically, yeah, all the naked fan art of Keanu Reeves. Kind of oh, like awesome. Cyberpunk. Kind of like what they did with Elliot Page <clears throat> in uh, Beyond Two Souls. Yeah. Yeah, and said, hey, you give us money or we're going to just sell your source code and post all this shit on the internet. CD Projekt said, fuck you. We're not going to pay your ransom. So We're in a lot of trouble right now as it is. We can't afford to just yes. pay off ransoms. So Thank this you. stuff has been... Leaking out, actually leaking out there, and apparently uh, this breach had caused many employees to be unable to work as they could no longer log into their company's VPN, their virtual private network, after the attack. So it left them without access to the tools or the uh, uh, the systems that needed to actually develop the patches and perform game development. And many employees actually had to send their physical laptops back to CD Projekt's IT to have them scanned for malware. Oh, what a nightmare for those guys just... In like a basement somewhere, just being like, just like sweating and being like, I just can't do it yeah. anymore. I mean, they were hamstrung for weeks, yeah. I, according to Bloomberg. And yeah. also, of note, like I mentioned before, the employees had their personal data, including like password information stolen and their banking info. So it turned into like a freaking nightmare hassle. See, banking? Oh, B- banking. I heard baking the first time. I'm like, and their, re- all their, the recipes? their recipes all have the, been stolen? All the Polish recipes, oh. yes. My, that was my Nana's secret <laughs> recipe. <laughs> Uh, the pierogies. <laughs> and anyways, it just turned into like just a big hassle because I think CD Projekt said, freeze all your assets. Shit's going to be really bad. Yeah. Fuck. Contact the State Im- Department. Remember how we told you it was going to get better? Not yet. Can you even imagine how low morale is probably <laughs> in that fucking building? Good it, God. Yeah. And it's not any of the, the regular old no, employees' it's fault. fault. It's too bad for them. It's got to be, yeah, it can't be great. They're going to get some sizable bonuses, though, but I don't know at what cost here, you know. So now the update is slated to come out at the last ha- half of this month, March. I don't know. No matter what your thoughts, I just wanted to s- possibly be fixing. Are you guys going to pick up Cyberpunk Everything. when it when it drops in price? Um, I'll pick 20. it up again. I, I'll wait until it's kidding. free on Game Pass. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Brad, be. did you get it or no? No. Okay. So um, just Tom's the only. It's one of those here, situations. Huh? That game will be probably pretty fun in I a bet. year or two years. I bet. Yeah. And I if can you got the PC then. version and a fucking good rig. It's fun now, apparently. So uh, the there are some fun aspects to this game. Uh, but it's a little busy in it, both its storytelling and its everything else. Okay. It's just a bit much, and it doesn't feel substantial, and the perks mean nothing. So hmm. I was immediately pretty bored. Gotcha. How many hours did you put in? Ish. Seven. Yeah, that's a good I mean, uh, but trip. that's, to me, like, I'm not going to torture myself to... I'm it, not getting paid to review it. So. it get, no. It gets good at like 17 and a half hours. There are some games I will say that's true, but <laughs> they keep me they keep me Oof. tied in through yeah. certain Dude, just things. wait till you hit that 50 hour mark. It gets fun. <laughs> yeah. Um so anyways, yeah, no matter what your thoughts on Cyberpunk, you know, I it just sucks for everybody and all of us here at the Dogcast, we send our best wishes to yeah, all you CD Projekt you. you know, like that sucks. You and didn't we do it. You didn't fucking deserve it's it. It's not your yeah. fault those pierogi recipes got stolen. We do wish the best for y'all. We love you. Or just keep working. Just keep working. Yeah. Okay, moving on here, guys. Epic Games. 
sorry. What the fuck happened? <laughs> I don't know. Shut up, Tom. Talk. Try new things. <laughs> All right, moving on. Epic Games bought Mediatonic, the makers of Fall Guys, one of last year's hit live service games. Mediatonic and Fall Guys joins Epic's ever-growing stable of acquisitions in recent times, which includes Psyonix, makers of Rocket League. The mass battle live service aspect of Fall Guys uh, seems to be a sensible addition, in my opinion, to the company's portfolio to go along with Rocket League and their money-printing King Jewel Fortnite. So Epic is kind of on a tear, sucking up you know, these littler studios making these games that are that encourage like almost battle royale or just yo, team is competition epic, is epic owned partially owned by that one company that owns everything like ten cent yeah ten cent they have yeah they have i've been observing some of that lately that's kind of crazy yeah they are they're a minority uh share stakeholder i believe mm. other than that yeah i mean epic's just fucking making money hand over fist so i don't know if you guys did we play fall guys I, know I we played Fall Guys about it back in the day. I played Fall Guys. It's cute and fun. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, God damn it, fuck you. And it's like, oh fuck you, I got you. It's a lot of f words. So. It's it's cute and fun. Yeah, that's true. It's it's really clever, I'd say. Um, and I'm sure they could even get. I mean, they could definitely make that. Could game you imagine like a 40 player Mario Party that's set up like that? Yeah, I could. Waiting for people to do their turns though would be. Well, not but like it would be more based around that like Uh-oh. instant gameplay stuff. That could be oh, cool. Man. That would be sick. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I've never played it. Uh, I was always curious about it, so I just watched other people play it. They could call it 128 Mario's. It'd be based on that one old like GameCube prototype or 64 when they were doing. Right. Yeah. All oh. right. Josh has opened a four-year-old year. Almost crawler. <laughs> year point six five. <laughs> nice. I was just gonna say. Uh, wow. I played light, uh, deep cut. I played Fall Guys for one and a half matches. I think. If you guys and could see like, his room it. right now, it is. Covered, covered in Fall Guys posters. Oh my god! Some of them quite erotic. Shut the fuck up. That's <laughs> they not have true. that unique shape. You know? that, where'd you get that wall scroll? It's huge. No, um, it's actually the Fall Guy Lee Majors. Oh uh, yes. Oh okay. Yeah. I have like face blindness, so. Okay. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> it's almost like Watch it's out. A, a really old beer. Tastes good. We're drinking old ass beer. This looks like it's got some resi. Oh yeah. I just want a little bit. I'm intrigued. Thanks, Josh. What happens when you take a crowler from a brewery and put it in your fridge for over a year and a half? <laughs> Under a heat lamp. You're yeah. supposed to oh, drink it within a week or so. It's so always been in the fridge. I'm, what? Not a, I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> it's a peanut butter and jelly raspberry no. cream ale. Mm-mm. Not for me. Thank you. <laughs> well, so the test of this was I found this in the back of my fridge. And I'm like, well, <laughs> shit. <laughs> we poured more beer out of this There's podcast a, than we have ever. Uh, there is something Let's... strange about that. I'm sorry. I told you it's aged. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's not the way it's supposed to taste. It's a seltzer now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could have. So I it went if I'm, sour. If I'm not choking it down. If Dylan refuses <laughs> a beer, <laughs> all right, all right. you know it's fucking bad. <laughs> hey, I, I ain't no bitch here. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I thought this was going to be. It was a fun and science project. you don't know project. unless you try it. You yeah, don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, I had a barley wine that we have on tap that's almost five years old. Yeah. Um, tastes totally fine. Very balanced. <laughs> but that's a barley wine, not a... Fruited cream ale. No. Um, I thought it was just my bad taste buds for a moment, but then I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I thought Dylan likes cream ales. I'm like, oh, shit. I do like cream ales <laughs> when they're creamy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's that awkward bitterness toward the very end. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's not strange. bitter beer, so. It has a strange, like, forward. Um, yeah. And it's supposed to be a cream, a it, cream ale, a creamy. This is, like, well, so supposed, over-carbonated. It's supposed to be more fru- fruited. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the carbonation... It's, that carbonation is just the fruit that's uh, it grew. re-fermenting in, in the can. Right. Tom, are you afraid that when you finally open up your PS5, it's going to taste just like that? Just bubble over? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Shit, I should take that out. God damn it. All right, guys. Uh, <clears throat> that was a good, good science experiment. Yeah. And... Uh, all right. Based on a recent report from Bloomberg, after five years on the market, an upgraded Nintendo Switch model appears to be on the horizon. This appears to be akin to the much-rumored Nintendo Switch Pro that has been alluded to for a while now. This new Switch will allegedly 
have a bigger 7-inch OLED screen that will be manufactured by Samsung. The screen will remain at the current resolution of 720p in handheld mode, but the nature of the OLED will have an increase in sharpness, visual fidelity, and response time over the current model's backlit LCD, while also being easier on battery life. Uh, no, that this intrigues me quite a bit, actually. My you hate the Switch, so I really want to get your opinion. My, my battery's dying on my Switch, unfortunately. Is it, it has to be Were you playing it a lot? It's like a PSP. <laughs> Is it about to explode? No, it's not even close to that. It's just, it's not holding a charge really anymore. Uh, okay. You can, but even when it's in sleep mode, it's draining the battery like crazy. So gotcha. it doesn't have a ton of time left on it, and I would love to upgrade. So I can wait a little bit longer. Yeah, Uh, the new Switch is also targeted being capable of outputting at 4K when docked. Rumors are just kind of trickling out. Capable. Capable, yes. So they don't know if it's going to be upscaled. Is it going to be native 4K? Because there's no really, there hasn't been any word on what CPU uh, will be running the quote unquote the show in the new hardware. Will they be upgrading? Joy Con. It's going to have three. Each Switch will have three Joy Cons now. Nice. Yes. Yep. I have that many. To be like that lady in total. Are you worried about Joy Con drift? Uh, it's not Joy-Con drift. I just wish that they felt a little more substantial because I like the Joy-Cons. I'm, fa- I'm, I famously have defended Joy-Cons on here. For the most part, Infamous. I want something that feels like it has a little more weight to it that maybe snaps into the screen a little bit better because I've heard a lot of people just saying, like, I can't play handheld because it rattles around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... I would love something that actually had more of a neater like slide, a nice fit. Maybe, maybe it it's the same thing, but it's just a little bulkier. Not yeah, a, I, I do like them too. I, the one thing that that gets me is I, the buttons are microscopic. To me, it's like mm-hmm. playing with an old BlackBerry. Especially when yeah. you're trying to like play the Joy-Con sideways yeah. with somebody. It's like yes, very I difficult. actually. I was gonna play it the other uh, the other day, and I'm like, for some reason, just it wasn't yeah. vibing with me. I hate those or the tiny one jo- buttons. the one Joy-Con where you actually have to use the buttons as the D-pad, which just fucking yeah. blows. Yeah, uh, there's like an official Hori pad that NES has put their logo on, or Nintendo's put their logo on, and I'd be curious to have one of those like bulky side, mm-hmm. like I don't know if they're technically yeah. Joy-Cons. They would I don't know what they'd be called, but like uh, it, it looks I mean, like an Xbox a, controller that yep. like bookends. Oh whatever. man, that looks great. Um, and I would like one of those because, yes, when I'm, yeah, like, I remember on an airplane trying to play Katamari with the Joy-Cons, and it just didn't feel right. Um, yeah. They don't sit in my hands properly. Yeah. Uh, that's that's maybe my biggest complaint. I'm used to playing small handhelds as a grown man, though. So. The, you're playing the Game Boy Advance Micro. The Micro, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and there's there's a part of me that likes the, I like the compact size. I I'm I'm a big proponent of... Uh, portable gaming in general unless it's on a fucking phone because then I can't do it it's it's what they're going to give and what they're going to take away that I'm worried about because there's always something like that with Nintendo they never keep all of the goods they always take parts of it away and they give you what you think you want mm-hmm. and I don't really trust them right now so I don't know wow yeah wow that's crazy we'll see yeah I, I don't know either like I I was just trying to think I forgot how big the screen is in the current form factor of the Switch, and if a seven-inch would actually, if you had the screen all the way out to the edges, if that would be seven inches. Because if you had to grow the screen, you would think that the Joy Cons would kind of have to expand with the form factor. Uh, the the size would end up being pretty comparable to a degree where I think yeah, I wouldn't think it would be too much. too much. The original Switch console is a six-point-two-inch LCD screen. So if they're extending it wider, it'd be diagonal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. Yep. So e- there'd still be a way to slide in the old ones, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. But I have to think that there's going to be new Joy Cons. I, I fully believe that there will be new Joy Cons. You know, I wish th- there's opportunities More to attach to, to attach other things to the side there. You'd think Nintendo would want to like. I thought they were going to do a lot more with that concept. Thick, like different <laughs> controllers for different games. You could do some weird stuff. Even just like have a uh, like. Atari joystick uh, attachment, something uh, not like that necessarily, but a the, fishing uh, controller. Anything could be attached to the side that would have different functionality, which could be opportunities. That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm I'm all for it. I I just it's it with Nintendo. It's always like with anything these days. I literally have to be like, well, I 
guess we got to wait and see. Exactly. Um, yeah, there hasn't been any, a lot of talk about what the CPU will actually be running it. So far, it's been the, the screen. It's got to be an upgraded CPU. I'm not, if it's not, what the fuck? I mean, my, my, my initial thought was, oh, it's going to just be an upgraded uh, version of the Tegra processor that's currently uh, powering the Switch, you know, made by NVIDIA. But then I read a story today, another rumor, just lots of fucking rumors going on here, that NVIDIA is actually ending production of the current Tegra processor. So we don't know if they're going to manufacture a new upgraded version or if Nintendo's going to start sourcing processors elsewhere or if they're just... Um, basically stockpiling current stock to make switches in the future. But you got to, you got to imagine that all the stockpiling in the world wouldn't be able to keep up with their perceived demand. Well, yeah. And plus if you want to output graphics at 4k, unless you're going to have a special new dock that, you there know, probably will be, um, has its own processor in it. Co-processor, the co-processor. This is why I don't drink it. You had like barely one. <laughs> Don't get Tom started. That's He's going to get Wow-y. loopy. I yep. just saw like a four person toaster with like four switches docked into like <laughs> one, one thing. Yes. It's four times as powerful. It's folding now. at home. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it worked that way. That'd right. be kind of cool. Right. It's sentient now. <laughs> <laughs> we added eight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, there's only one of me. You're going to need this four-person Switch thing. Yeah, so based on Nintendo's recent Switch sales project- projections, the new upgraded Switch is anticipated to launch before the end of their next fiscal year, which would be the end of March 2022. So given the new screens are rumored to go into production this summer, I'd put money on holiday 2021 or possibly early 2022. They they know that their market is early spring now. The same way that... You think like the same Switch kind of time frame? It, yeah. I'm, I'm going to put my money that on that because they have no competition for anything. Like no one's going to take... Like no one's releasing games a lot in that time either. Usually yeah. towards the end of the month into April is when people... Like the big titles can start coming out. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, like they know they're... They know they're going to just fucking nail it. They If they release it with Breath of the Wild 2. Yes. Uh, they would fucking mm-hmm. dominate. Hmm? And that is a sounds like a good time frame for Breath of the Wild too. It really does, doesn't it? Five years from the uh, original, so and it plays best work. only on the Switch Pro. But yes. you don't want there the also, there's also a Wii U version that'll be yeah. sixty dollars for the you next ten years. Um, you don't want to see those muddy pixels, do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh I, no. I, I was originally thinking, okay, holiday 2021, right? The new consoles from Sony and Microsoft came out would have come out the year before, but the supply of the new consoles has been so constrained. That this next holiday is to me like almost going to be another launch for yeah. PS5 and Xbox One X. Yeah, you know because they're so just hard to find with these days. So it might be behoove Nintendo to hold off until the spring. I mean, it did well for the Switch. You know? I'm I'm gonna go get in line right now at Target <laughs> yeah. for the Switch launch next year. There you go. Yes. Yes, and hopefully that's when the next stimmy checks, the stimulus checks hits for everybody. <laughs> oh God. Next spring. So. Oh my God. I'll take the stimulus checks, just not the uh, things that go along with it. I'm going to take a sip of this. Yeah, what do we got here, Josh? Oh, Brad. Have you heard of a brewery called Hoppin' Frog? I've definitely seen them around, yeah. Uh, Well, here we go. Well, I thought they disappeared for a while, and all of a sudden their stuff just started popping back here and there. Um, It's still not in the Wisconsin area that much, but I got this from elsewhere. Humble brag. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) No shit. But uh, no, it's just like you can't find it. I really thought they weren't around anymore. But uh, yeah, this is their uh, peanut butter, hazelnut, caramel, chocolate, cake stout, and it's floating in at a 8% ABV. 8%. So wait, is this a cake or a beer? <laughs> right, Brad. Out of you. All right. <laughs> so Somebody's, it's got yeah. a nice, uh, like almost like baker's chocolatiness with that nutty goodness. I yeah. got a lot of hazelnut At first smell. I was like, huh. It's not like... And then like, I'm like, huh, I do like this. It's good. It's not like super sweet sweet, which is what I thought it was going to be mm-hmm. when you said all those things mm-hmm. in one sentence. I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to be straight up dessert. But oh yeah, it's... Um, I mean, it's still dessert, but definitely more baker's chocolate overkill. than like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Hershey's. It has a tiny little touch of bitterness, but like barely. I like that. I like it bitter. Oh. Hey, but, Dylan's but, back. Oh, Hey, don't hey sorry. Dylan. Yeah, sorry I had to rub one out. Uh, yeah. you know? you, we, just, we were talking about Nintendo. You should have heard Jack's response when you got up to go to the bathroom. He's like, you can do that? This is awkward. <laughs> that was awesome they called that out. Like, what, where'd he go? <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay. Uh, moving on. We're, we're getting towards the end of the list. 
I hate to uh, be the bearer of bad news, but uh, whoa, is this about Sonic? No, th- no, I just meant that we're getting is to the end pregnant? of the we're getting to the end of the news. Sonic, Sonic got snubbed started. in the Oscars, not a single Oscar nom. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sonic Two started production. Is that what you're gonna say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. They're making a sequel to the game. They're making a sequel. <laughs> Finally, Sonic 2. yeah. Whoa. Uh, mm-hmm. The Microsoft ZeniMax Bethesda acquisition is officially done. Uh, the completion of the deal was announced March 9th in a blog post by head of Xbox, Phil Spencer. This comes after Microsoft initially announced their intent to buy ZeniMax last September for $7.5 billion. In the meantime, the European Commission and the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission both needed to approve the deal, which officially happened last week. We don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Just teasing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Come on, approve the deal. No. Not yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or the, the fucking European. No, we don't need your fucking shit. No, <laughs> wait, wait, what? I do not need you, but as uh, I am too busy eating it again. I'm not an eating. Americans and wait two seconds. Right. The accent. The guy in Germany is just like, nine. <laughs> so just to recap of the studios that were in the deal, we have Bethesda Game Studios, maker of things. Oh, Big, yeah, Fallout 76. Fallout 7, the best. Prey, Fallout. Uh, uh, id Software, Zenimax Online Studios, Arcane, Machine Games, Jesus. Christ. Tango Gameworks, Alpha Dog, and the darling of Madison, Wisconsin, Roundhouse Studios. We should get those guys on the podcast. It'd be fun. Yeah. Where, where have they been? In Madison. Madison. Well, we've been here the whole time. What's the deal? We should have done this years ago. I know. Ago. We'll do it at Drafty Cellar. We'll meet in the hey. middle. They used to be uh, Human Head. And have ties with Raven. Yeah, so to commemorate the occasion, a bunch of ZeniMax games, uh, mostly, but well, yeah, a bunch of these studios games uh, dropped on Game Pass shortly after the announcement. So many of them uh, that were already on there, though? I thought uh, so, too. Yeah, I, like, I, I tried Skyrim's to download a bunch, and they're like, you already got them. I was yeah. like, what? Today uh, we yeah. announced all the games you already have I, I, are I, dropping. I, I logged Woo. on before I canceled my, my subscription for a while, because I just haven't been playing my Xbox, and I was just like, oh, man, I'm going to play all these games I've played before. But uh, of yes. special note, some of these games did get the new FPS boost that has been shown to be yeah. like part of the new Series X. Oh, lovely. Uh, yep. Skyrim can now run in 60 FPS. Prey, I forget what else was on there. but Prey would be awesome in yeah. 60 FPS. Yeah. Have you guys ever played that one? For like four minutes, uh, just the beginning. I, I do want to play it. I love that studio. It is one of those wonderful, like, um, it's, it's almost Bioshock in yeah. the way that it presents It seems like itself. a Tom game. It is. It truly is. It's less about like the shooting, and it's more about how you use your environment to your advantage. Yep. Super fun. Yeah, I, I had bought a good time it. with it. I bought it last week for five bucks. Uh, if anybody, if you oh, nobody's, timing. <laughs> if nobody's played Dishonored, go fucking play Dishonored. Oh, yeah, oh, so that good. Is one of the best games of last year. Uh, especially if you're a big thief fan, uh, and that those yeah. kind of games. Well, Dishonored too. They're, they're making so. our kids into actual thieves, so. They are. They really are. Uh, after this deal was officially done, there was a big roundtable podcast on Major Nelson's podcast network, like the X, the official Microsoft Xbox podcast. What did Ground Control have to say? <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry. Major time. Yeah, I got it. Okay. <sighs> I, hey, that's nice. It's good. It's good. Fuck, you know, <laughs> um, I, I tried. And I won't paraphrase it here, but... It, you know, obviously the whole the whole talk is like, what games are going to be exclusive? Are games going to be exclusive now? Is Microsoft going to pull them off of fucking PlayStation uh-huh. or whatnot? Some his, are. His yes. statement like was yes. came off like, I want to be really clear, and he was not clear at all. <laughs> no. He had no idea. It was very confusing. Some so. will be, some won't be. Right. Okay. We have contractual obligations, but, but now we'll you see know. Through. But we want every place that Game Pass is at. We want you Xbox player to know that these games are coming, and it's. Yeah, it was just kind of like, you have no idea yet, so... This shit's not going to bear fruit for years anyway, so... I know. It's really hard to even speculate or care. I, I'm it, excited about some other potential acquisitions that have been just getting rumored again with oh. Microsoft. Oh, what's that? Well, a little game company called uh, Sega. What? And another small gump- uh, company you might not have heard of called Konami. What? What are these rumors coming from, Brad? The internet. Oh, it's happening tomorrow. Finally, another it. fucking good Castlevania game. Jesus Christ. Well, I, I, I'm most excited. Well, it's like, what, what will Microsoft do with those franchises? I think Metal Gear Solid, if they put it in the right hands, that's exciting. Because right now, that's dead. Pr- that's a lot of pressure. Konami is it, now it making needs, needs avatars. Be, it, I, honestly, it, it needs to be Well, done. I think if they were to put it in another like, uh, tour game maker with like a strong, different vision, it, it has potential. I don't know. It's like not every good James Bond movie is like this. Right. There's multiple options and opportunities. Castlevania, 
wow, there's so many things they could do with that franchise. Yeah, and really give it to fucking From Software. Let both them, good or bad. Oh, give man. it to From Software. Make it tough. Oh. Make it Dracula's Castle all interconnected. I, yes. Bloodborne was a Castlevania game. It kind of was. But make it actually Castlevania. I, I agree. I'm on, I'm on board with that shit. Yeah. So on board. Uh, I I'm going to go rub one out. Finally, we could do another Silent Hill game. Uh, we could do... One of their first things is like, we're just giving PT over to... Uh, Giving yeah, it back to Kojima. Gonna, well, Kojima, he's got his own shit now. In lieu of doing Silent Hills, he did Death Stranding. And thank you, when he's doing his own shit, and he's allowed to do it, that guy, that guy can roll. Like, what if they're like, first thing of goodwill, if they got the company like, PT, the demo's available again. Just anyone, if you want it, just there it is. Right. Like, something as nice as that would be great. A lot of prices in those PS4s would <laughs> drop. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Konami would be great. I... I why why can't they just buy the IP from Konami is what I'm thinking. Because like, Konami, Konami wants their pachinko machines. Like, yeah. let them keep them just... Because there's already rumors that they're trying to, like, maybe have other companies make games now for them. So yeah. just sell the IPs. Get out of the... Hold on to the pachinko rights if you need to. And then just let everyone else have the games. You yeah. must drop the small metal ball on I, Yeah, I don't Make know her boobs space. bigger. Why are they small? I don't know how... I don't know how realistic the Konami thing is. But I do think the Sega... Thing, d- might have merit. There's been so many rumors over the years. It would be such a boon for them. The and it fact seems that, like they have yeah. a bit of a, rela- a cozy relationship right now uh, with all the Yakuza games coming, the Game Pass. and Microsoft still doesn't do well in Japan. Like right. The Series X were selling out just because they, they didn't have the Yak- numbers. If they made Yakuza games on their console, people would just be buying. I'd buy. Especially with like Sonic DLC games. for the game. Come on. I mean, yeah, obviously. Kitty, you run so fast. <laughs> My name's Titty Fuck the Bat. <laughs> right. So there you go. Uh, yeah, it's going to be years before we see any fruits from the studios. I'm hoping Starfield. I'm really curious to see what that game is all about. I uh, feel like that one's sake, going to how be... Long, how long has that been? It's been a while. Been a while. I didn't do I it. I just <laughs> want a good starship. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do it. I didn't do it. The, I, I, do I, it? Love, I love Squadrons. Uh, yeah. Honestly, retroactively, I wish I could put I could have put it on my games of last year. Mm-hmm. Squadrons, yeah, yeah. Squadrons is so good. We got to get an online game going for that. Yeah, it's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. uh, Yumi, you Yumi, me. Bone Zone, Killer Kip, the Killmeister. Yeah, we can get a, we can get a five player squad on Squadrons because that game in VR is. Well, I'm too excited. We'll keep <laughs> settle down, yeah. settle down. Yeah. So what what I was gonna say is Starfield, like a nice like something that I thought Outer Worlds could have been. I'm I'm kind of thinking that level of mm-hmm. hopefully that's what they're doing. It could just be more straightforward, but yeah, I don't I, know. I get a boner for space travel in video games, so sure. Yeah, I'm I'm into it. Me too. And I feel like that I think Starfield will be exclusive just because it it's not one of those franchises that has already been on a competitor console. Right. Anyway, but that's getting ahead of myself. I really don't care. Uh, is this it? Is this the last fucking one? Oh, there's all that. The stuff. storm oh, is the shit. storm is over. Almost. This is penultimate. This is the penultimate news. Topic. I can't wait. You ready? Nope. The MPD Group released their sales for February. Uh, oh, this is exciting. Uh, yes. And after its first four months on the market, the PS5 is the fastest selling hardware platform in history. <laughs> this designation comes from numbers of dollars spent on hard- hardware, not by units sold. So let's just be clear, as Sony has not reported that information. However, Nintendo Switch was still the number one seller for the month of February. Switch lifetime sales based on dollar sales have now surpassed the Nintendo DS. This makes the Switch Nintendo's second best-selling console behind the Wii and the seventh best-selling platform of all time. Um, See, the Switch is going to do better than the other consoles because they're available. That's a simple strategy. Just by having consoles on the the shelf, they're going to sell them. You're correct. Uh, I'm smart. So based on actually... Based on I actual units it. sold, nice, Brad. thank you. <laughs> Switch has been the best-selling overall platform for the last 27 consecutive months, which is Very cool. a record. And here are your yeah, best-selling games better. for the month of February 2021. Okay. Number one, Super Mario World plus Bowser's Fury. Yes, this is 2021's second best-selling game so far. Just and this is just based on box copies sold. It's number one. Yeah, um, sold out almost immediately. There you go. Uh, number two, Call of Duty. Black Ops Cold War, which was, is oh, 2021's awesome. best-selling game. I don't want to play fun. a game with war criminal Ronald Reagan as like a main character. <laughs> check check this out. Number three, Persona 5 Strikers. Ayo! Wow. 
Boom, boom, boom. boom. Let me hear you say. There's, a, there's enough latex for anyone in that game. <laughs> yeah. Good job, P5. We like you here on the Dogcast. Are you ever going to play like yours? Because I want to borrow it when you're done. Yeah, I do. It's I, I'm going to do Miles Morales first. Is it a first. soccer game or a Because i got to get out of game Brad set. it first? Huh? Brad's got time on his hands. <laughs> he's long, he's, he's, he's <laughs> I'm know. literally just going to ask know. for him. <laughs> I don't know. Can he play it while you're playing Miles Morales? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you let me borrow see. Cyberpunk. <laughs> you're like waiting to approve a business. I didn't want to play Cyberpunk right anyway. <laughs> you're you're waiting to approve a business. It. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Uh, By no- the time you play it, it'll be like 40 bucks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably, yeah. Uh, number you can f- have it. <laughs> number four, the fourth best-selling game of February 2021, Spider-Man Miles Morales, followed by huh? five, Madden 21, and rounding out the list from six mm. through ten are follows, Little Nightmares, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Little Nightmares, the first one? Two just came sure. out. It's new to, yeah, maybe it's Little Nightmares 2. Oh, it's new okay. to the list. I was going to say, like, if... I mean, it's been on sale in a lot of platforms, but I, I got to say it must be too. Okay. So How the fuck do people keep buying Madden? I'm ashamed three. of all you people. <laughs> Tiger Woods is coming back. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a football lover. They should put him on the Go cover off, of Madden. Queen. Uh, the, 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 Tiger Woods is gonna, uh, signed a deal sure. to be on the cover of golf games again. Okay. Yeah. That's true. I read that. They're adding a cheating on your wife uh, DLC. <laughs> okay. Number seven, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And number eight, Mario Kart 8. Deluxe. Jesus fuck. Isn't that amazing? Right. Number Good nine. for them. Good no, for them. Number nine. That's Number why nine. that's but if people keep When's buying the, this shit, no one's gonna make a Yeah, when is one. the next one supposed to come out? It was supposed to come out never. like <laughs> last year. It's like these suckers gonna keep buying the old one? <laughs> well yeah, I mean if people are it's still well, making the top ten list, like don't at, release the next one. At yet. this yeah. point, but it's not is, even the best Mario card. They're just gonna wait for the next uh maybe they'll tie it in with the release of the next uh Switch. Mm. Oh, there you go. Well, they're d- actually they, not a bad idea. Highly possible. They announced the new Rainbow Road uh, like RC car set, the Hot Wheels set. So if you're looking for a new yes. Mario Kart fix, just get your Hot Wheels God on. damn it. It looked cool. I did, got the did look at it. Way to diversify right Nintendo. And number nine is Animal Crossing New Horizons. And finally, <laughs> rounding up the spot at number 10, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Which you that. don't have to pay for, really. Is that the Kevin Spacey one? No, that's, no, that's advanced, advanced warfare. Yeah. That one's also got. You press X. X to pay your fucking respects, or F if you're on a keyboard. Yeah, um, X it is. <laughs> okay, that's been your NPD update, and finally, that was going to be our last news story, but this one's hot off the presses. Uh oh, like, this one just oh, in, just in, baby. just in, and it's this one's kind of uh, kind of a. Sad He's got one. another one. <laughs> so Activision Blizzard announced that it has laid off 50 people across various divisions, uh, with a number of those being employees involved with their live events, like their esports, um, and also some from Candy Crush Studio King. Dylan looks sad. It is sad. <laughs> so according to the website, The Verge... I hate Verge, to see him go, but I love to watch him walk away. <laughs> so the, the, company, the, company, the company cites the COVID-19 pandemic's effects on both the viability of... So we're not going to back up our employees. We're going to abandon them. <laughs> ...of live productions for its esports leagues and the changing viewership habits of its core audi- audience over the past year. So Activision Blizzard's two biggest esports leagues are pertain to Overwatch and the Call of Duty series. Here's these companies barely have is, money at all. They can't afford to have extra staff. So this is Bloomberg Shoot. chimed in. Uh, I think Jason Schreier, he added stuff to this story that just literally broke before we uh, I started recording. This is the thing that was fucked up to me. Bloomberg they reported that the laid-off employees will get 3 months severance. Okay. Uh, health benefits for a year. Mm. Get this. A $200 gift card to Activision Blizzard's Battle.net PC platform. <laughs> wow, that's really generous. What of the them. fuck? That is like a slap. That's a so fucking fucked thing. up. It's yeah. Like you used to work for this company, remember? Here's a gift <laughs> card. Here's $200. Buy yourself Yikers. some uh, lunch. Or, well, I mean, it, but it's, it's for the Battle.net. It's a new costume. It's, it's like Diablo. Uh, what do you want to buy on a. <laughs> Team, what Team Fortress Two? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. That's I I read that. It's not a good look. look. It's not a good look. But one is. Activision. But with that two hundred dollars, you could buy a good look. It's true, and I bet Bobby Kotick gets like four hundred million dollars in uh, bonuses this year, uh, because that's just how he fucking rolls. He needs those bonuses. Yeah, and you know how we roll by taking a break and listening to these awesome shows from the Greenlit Podcast Network. Yeah, baby. They are awesome. I've been trying to listen to as many as I can lately because I've had some extra time, and yeah. I can say I approve of all of them. I'm with you, Brad. That I've listened and to. But. Joys and everybody is awesome. We had some on the podcast, and uh, some of these guys chatted the Wild Boys. Fantastic. Wonderful guys. Fantastic. So uh, go ahead and listen to these shows. Check them out, and we'll be back to tell you what we're playing, and we're going to talk some 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja. Go Ninja. Go Ninja. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Jonathan Dunn, and I'm inviting you to listen to Our Three Cents, a weekly podcast where myself and two of my very best gaming chums are counting down our top 100 favourite video games of all time. For all the episodes and information, check out our website, www.our3cents.co.uk. Hey, Lassie, what are you doing here? Timmy's in a well. Sequel Cast 2 and Friends is a podcast looking at movies in a franchise, one film at a time, like Harry Potter, Hellraiser, and The Hobbit. And sometimes the hosts talk about video games and TV as well. And now it's part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. Oh, Lassie, we don't need to rescue Timmy. He likes the well well enough, I guess. Darth Vader is Luke's father. Lassie, I told you to lay off the spoilers. <laughs> All right, and we're back. <laughs> I did it, guys. Yeah. Tom, you're doing it. Yeah. Hey, Tom, you finally up. become yourself. You yeah. broke off of me. Um, welcome back to Hair the Dogcast. And uh, I just wanted a, a quick a quick edit from the, our last news topic, uh, oh. the Activision people getting laid off. Uh, I guess it, the, it was 190 people total, 50 of which were kind of uh, involved with the, the live Oh, uh, esports and stuff. So okay. it was a, it was a bigger number, and uh, our hearts go out to all of you. They yeah. got two hundred dollars in gift cards, dude. <laughs> dude, they should be fine. That's well, they, at least they can they listen to Hair the Dogcast for free. That's ridiculous. They can listen to Hair the Dogcast for free, though. That's true. Or they could donate two hundred. <laughs> well, we don't accept gift cards for Patreon. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> all right. Now, Depends on, on the gift card, but not Activision on, Blizzard. If you're ones. unemployed, don't subs- don't don't. Give to us on Patreon until no. you have a cool new better job. Just then. wait till you get your yep. stimulus so you check and then subscribe. And then <laughs> or, feature, all right. or feature children. I don't know. All right, guys, stop this. Uh. Come on. I hope I never lose my job around you guys. <laughs> Jesus. Um, It'll be all right. so fun. Let's talk about what we're playing because it's been a while since we talked about what we're playing. It's been a while. How about you first, Thomas? Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> well, hey, um, thanks for asking, Dylan. Wow, yeah. Uh, I've been... <laughs> I've been playing a shit ton of Neo Geo. I fixed up my, my game room here. Uh, Which games? Behind me. A lot it's of a them. Good looking oven. A lot of them. Metal Slug? I haven't gone. I'm, I'm saving all the Metal Slugs. I'm I hoping maybe you would like to. Uh, yeah. You're um, actually playing on, on Neo Geo? A Neo Geo that's actually hooked up to a tube television. With a multi cart, right? With a multi cart. Okay, because otherwise yeah. it's like a 300 bucks a, yeah. a cartridge or something, right? No, I've just been uh, uh, just mainlining podcasts and going through almost like uh, alphabetically. Checking all the games that uh, I kind of missed, and uh, even a lot of fighting games because I'm not like a fighting game dude. And it, it's been a lot of fun. I still love that system so much. And one day I'm gonna make you guys love it too. Do you have a second controller? I do. I yep. would love to do a Metal Slug run with you. I'm be- really good at it. I I played um, the Metal um, the Metal Slug anthology for the Wii. Mm-hmm. I played that probably 50 times through just because. Oh, that's I awesome. Thought I thought the art assets were so flipping cool. Yeah, and everything the about animation. it. It's so much fun. Absolutely, the the multi card as well as the my Neo Geo has a, a BIOS upgrade. So it's basically it has a built in Game Shark, and oh, no, every game cheat. has like all the yeah all the cheats on, or you can select cheats and whatnot. So fun. Yeah. You guys yeah, would like the fun. Neo Geo. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'll have to. You try. need to get a Neo Geo at the uh, Drafty Cellar. Okay. All right. I as long as you pay for it, Tom, don't yeah. put it in there. I wish Why does Neo mine. Geo have to be priced so um, uh, so nice? The game that I've, I'm still playing, the game I've been playing the most is the one I have been playing, uh, Yakuza Like the, like a Dragon. I am getting towards the end of that game now. Like a dragon. I, I think I'm... Hey. Torched for the very first time. And the farts. Yeah. <laughs> and we were talking about uh, voice acting. Yeah. And I... Came across an elderly man in the game. Are you listening to it in Japanese or English? English. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this... A bit of a faux pas. It was an, what do you mean faux pas? If I would have done that, I would not have had this neat story to tell. Okay. Okay. I come across this, this elderly man. He's got a bit of a side quest, and he's a traffic uh, census taker. So basically clicking how many people are walking uh, in front of him on the sidewalk and keeping count. And he starts talking... And he starts talking like this. And I'm like, that's John Bentley. That's fucking John Bentley. And sure enough, uh, I I couldn't find his exact credit. I know he's in the game. He plays one of the uh, henchmen for uh, the the bad faction. They definitely put John Bentley uh, behind the, the voice of this small Asian man. And it's 
fucking hilarious. And I mean, it is very close to uh, him doing Barrett, but not quite. Yeah, so. they they always they modulate a bit, but you can always sometimes you can just fucking. Tell. It just comes out. Yeah, exactly. sometimes sometimes there are games I play where I'm like, well, this might as well just be Skyrim because it's like yeah, five people. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, John Eric Bentley, awesome dude. Um, does great work, and I just thought that was kind of funny. But anyways, the game itself, I really like this game. I don't know, you guys haven't played it yet, have you? Or I've seen some playthrough. I've also read a lot of reviews and impressions. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. Um, yes. A lot of the people find the combat to be fulfilling, but also a little annoying. Okay. I do like the, the pivot to RPG mm-hmm. uh, combat now. Uh, like oh, full-on no. turn-based. Yeah. And I, I like how the, the game actually pivots into that. You know, your character is a fan of RPGs, of Dragon Quest specifically. Mm-hmm. So there's, you know, little Dragon Quest memes that pop up or like audio flourishes that are straight up out of Dragon Quest. And, so, and just the analogs, there's a job system. You have to go to a job agency and you can mm-hmm. change your jobs. You know, like instead of being like having a straight up ice mage in modern day Japan, you know, they have the analog of this host job where oh. instead of throwing icicles, uh, you're serving drinks or something. You are, you basically shake up a sh- bottle of champagne, oh, you know, yeah. and spray it all over people. That's cool. So it's stuff like that. There's like a summon system. That's hilarious. You meet all these fucking people that you can call on your cell phone. Shit. The, you know, everything from like a chicken to a, a, chicken. a big old giant man in a baby outfit. It, you know, it's a typical like bad shit, like Yakuza stuff. But that said, like I, since I got to the end game, there are a couple things that kind of like made the bloom come off the rose a little bit. I mean, I, st- I still really like the game. That's dirty. The bloom come off the rose. The I bloom don't know. just came off that fucking thing. Um, Jesus, Brad. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll, I'll try to make this quick. So this no, the, no, no, no. The Keep story. Talking. This main story is pretty compelling. I mean, it's not fucking Faulkner, but, you know, it... It's Yakuza. It's Yakuza. Yeah. But it, it's compelling because you want to know what happens, you know? And the characters are great. Yeah. Uh, and all the backstories are, are really cool. And the story moves at a pretty good clip for most of the game to the point where I was like, you know, I want to see what happens next. So I was just mainlining the main missions. So I, I kind of felt guilty. Like, I'm, I'm missing out on all the, the side quests that... You know, think you're gonna lose out on the true ending? Well, no, but I, I felt like, man, am I gonna beat this game before I go through all the uh, the side quests? Because mm-hmm. you know, Yakuza is known for just having the bad shit. You know, crazy. Yeah, some really fun stuff just randomly snuck all all throughout the game. Yeah, 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 exactly. And let me tell you, you will reach a point where don't worry, you will you will have to do a lot of the side quests because the story kind of like it's kind of this ham fisted way of uh, making the main story come to a halt mm. and requiring you to perform a lot of these, these side quests. You know, yeah. it's like filler. Everything's going at a clip. And you're like, shit, shit. And then all of a sudden, okay, now you have to make 3 million yen. And the, re- the way you do that is to... This is the part I heard about. Complete. Oh, okay. And you're a homeless guy to begin with, pretty much. So Yeah, you're a homeless guy. You befriend another homeless guy. And, for, uh, for people who don't know, three million yen is like three hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so <laughs> that was that was a bit of a bummer. I I, I was kind of happy that okay now we get a chance to do the side content because the side content is fucking fantastic. But I just didn't like the way that they did it in the game. I felt there was a better way to guide you towards that rather than just be like okay now you hit a wall. The second thing is once you get that three million yen, shortly after that you start facing enemies that are like 10 to 15 levels above you. So you have to like immediately like start grinding again Mm. to increase your level. Otherwise you're going to get smoked. And thankfully there are, there, there are mechanics in the game that allow you to level up pretty quickly. They introduce a battle arena. Oh, that's fun. Which seems like, Oh, it's an arbitrary thing. Like, you know, I'm not really into the games that have battle, battle arenas like Final Fantasy VII Remake. You know, like, I'll just do the main stories there. I won't come back on my own and actually... It's always a, it's always a bit of a scapegoat. Yeah. This is one where, uh, if you're playing you're this game... Chadley is a scapegoat? Chadley's a fucking scapegoat. Yes. I'm uh, <laughs> not just Chadley, but many of the new yes, characters. This is a battle arena <laughs> that you do not pass up. You need to go through this uh, uh, thing. And it's pretty easy. It's like 30 levels. And sure. I did it twice 
and got my guys all uh, leveled up and you end up making like millions and millions of yen in this thing and some uh, pretty high level gear. So that's my hot Yakuza tip. I did not care for that so much, but outside of that, and now that I'm past that part, I mean, I'm back to loving the game. I hope you all get a chance to play it sometime. If you're not a fan of the Yakuza franchise, this is a great one to get in on because you know it's almost like a reset. You're a new character I who miss- doesn't know a lot because he's been in prison right. for 15 years. Yeah. So he doesn't know in the past what's been going on. Well, that's what so. happens in every Yakuza game, though. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but the, the cast of characters and everything. I will shut up now, but that's what I've been playing. I really do want to play it. I wish you mm-hmm. had a physical. Yeah, I, I do regret um, <clears throat> not getting the physical. I would, love, I would have loved to borrow it. Uh, I'm yeah. going to wait till it drops in price, though, before mm-hmm. I even touch it. It'll probably be on Game Pass in uh, a few thought. months. Yeah. yeah. Brad, you've been playing a lot. I was looking at some of the numbers here uh in the past week and a half i have in just psvr played 35 to 40 different games um games that i beat to completion accounting plus astrobot rescue mission beat saber iron man moss star wars squadron static and tetris effect uh plan to add resident evil 7 to that before we record from vr itself uh the vr version Man, that is a rough experience. It's. I played some of it today, non VR. I'm like, wow, this game isn't that scary, and it's a lot it's not, easier. It's not scary, <laughs> uh, but I, in I, VR, I, it is terrifying. Yeah, I, um, I, I played it with a buddy, and so there's a scene early on where someone's like stabbing you, and I literally just went, oh, whoa, whoa, no, stop! I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> um, I will say. Uh, Star Wars Squadrons uh, is one of the best experiences. It it's my favorite one I've done on there. Mm-hmm. But realistically, I played it online with Jamie and Dom for a little while in multiplayer. Oh, no shit. And there's a built-in microphone in your, your VR headset. And I want to get you on there. We got to see if Kip can get on there and someone else maybe. But um, awesome. it is so good that... I could see myself regularly wanting to put on the VR headset to play it, yeah. which I wouldn't say like any of these other games, like I want to regularly play VR. It's, it's a fun thing to do for a while, but mm-hmm. this is, it's so good. It feels like putting in $2 in an arcade and having those like big nice. experiences. Yep. It feels that good. And it's cross play with uh, other VRs and other oh. platforms, cool. awesome. but you have such an advantage in VR. It's crazy how you're able to yes. f- like look around and follow ships so much better. Is that the only flight simulator uh, on the VR? You that can you also. Uh, I've also played Eve Valkyrie, which okay. was yeah. on the the demo disc 2.0, which is really good. Yep, but that was the one a- I played after Squadrons. It's like you want okay. Squadrons. Well, I haven't played Potter, VR of really. it yet. Okay, no, on Squadrons. I, I, yeah, and I thought it was okay. Oh, play it, play it in VR. Yeah, it I played Squadrons, squadrons for like so ten minutes just without VR, yeah. and I'm like, I, eh. if I if I weren't playing it in VR, I think I'd, it'd have so much less of an impact on me personally. Brad mm-hmm. let me borrow his VR system, and playing it without it, I tried it. I'm like, yeah, it's a little like Rogue Squadron. All right, mm-hmm. I, I fucking get it. Instead of like you can, you're in the different you're ships. In the fucking cockpit. And the cockpits yeah. are all different too. So like you're in like those big support ships and you're like looking around. There's like <laughs> extra seats fuck? everywhere. It's so cool. You're like you're in a U-wing. You're like, oh, this, oh. Right. Yeah. Um, That's it's, awesome. It's transformative and it is one of the best home gaming experiences I've had in quite a while. It's a new experience. Yeah. It feels like a uh, couple thousand dollar arcade machine sitting in your home. Truly. With this, in speci- like specifically, I'm also a big fan of Moss is probably my second favorite because that game is pure fantasy and it's cute. There's many reasons. Always heard the name, but the puzzles don't know are fun. The puzzles are fun. The mouse's name is Quill. She speaks to you in sign language and it's fucking adorable. It's, it is sickeningly cute. And then, yeah, I was also a big fan of Astrobot Rescue Mission. I heard that one's good. In my opinion, the little Astrobot is not as good as Mario, but it is good enough to be Sony's mascot, which they've, they're pushing it now, but like, Make Astrobot your 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 big front person. Yeah, I mean, well, he's no, he's been great always. And going back and looking at some of the other Astro stuff that I kind of overlooked is just like freeware on your new system. It's like actually, like yeah. the PS5 Astrobot game is amazing. I, I don't know if I platinumed it, but it's it's like a full platform experience, and it takes place inside 
uh, inside your PS5 yeah. and it's exploring the history of all the different like PlayStation games and like units and stuff. Oh, it's so good. I keep forgetting that that's Sounds on the, amazing. Uh, the hard drive. Each they have a different level based on the one, two, three, and four. Plus, you also unlock like little models of the Vitas and like the move controllers. It's really cute. Fuck yeah. But yeah. So that's, that's what I've been up to. That That's a lot. Yeah. Good for you, man. Yeah. And uh, you're not cross eyed or anything. So, uh, VR is, is, field? It is hurting work? my brain, though. <laughs> okay. I, I've been having VR nightmares where I was so bad and I was like forcing myself awake. And in my dream, I actually took a VR headset off before I woke up. It was weird. Nice. It's some real inception shit. Yeah. All it's right. getting there. <laughs> Dylan? Uh, I've mostly been just playing Death Stranding. Uh, Death Stranding is. I, I've said it so many times on the podcast. I said, oh man, I wish I had a PS4 so I could play this. I'm borrowing Brad's and I'm playing Once or the twice. Damn thing. Once or twice. And I said, no, this is clearly my jam. This is everything that I like. The thing about the game, and the first thing I will say, even before we, we're, we're going to have an episode on Raw Dogs about it oh, uh, yeah. late summer. So look forward to that. However, mm. the thing I'll say about it <laughs> first and foremost is that this is a game with true auteurship and... It doesn't function great as a video game on its own. Edward was an auteur. Go ahead. But it functions very well as a piece of art. As yeah. a mode of storytelling. I want to play it. I do want to play it. It's, it is not everyone's jam. I can say that right away. A lot of people would be bored by something like this. But I am so drawn in to very odd and weird specific things that Death Stranding has become this kind of like... It just, a tale for the modern age. Ex- I, I actually do think so. Because yeah. not here, here's, here's one of the things that is the most fascinating <laughs> about it. No, dude. It is. <laughs> it's, it's like reconnecting America. It's, it's fascinating not just in that, but the fact that games this size, AAA... With pure, like, I'm going to make a game of, about a guy who delivers things. That's usually for the indie crowd. That's not for people who have millions and millions and millions of dollars to spend. Yeah. However, this time, someone was able to fly with what they were given. And there's something very refreshing about it. In fact, most of the game is, like, killing things is bad within the context of the game. So, you don't want to kill anyone. It could cause a game over. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, like... I love these non-violent problem-solving games that involve physics and like movement. And sometimes it feels a little lonely. Sometimes it feels like, what the fuck am I even doing here? Yeah. But I think these are all questions that Kojima wanted to ask. Well, it encourages kids drinking Monster Energy, though. So Honestly, mm-hmm. but then it becomes Timefall Porter. You take the good with the better. Which is a beer. Which replaces it after a while. Ooh. Timefall Porter, yes. Your canteen, you get old enough to want beer instead of energy drinks. So Timefall is the, rain, yeah. is the rain that actually causes aging. So like you have to be constantly covered from the rain at all times. And every time I would make Norman Reedus pick up a can of Timefall Porter and drink it, I was just like, man, that probably is pretty fucking good. <laughs> I was like, man, that looks good. Better than that jam shush. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, I bought the... Three LP for Death Stranding the other day. Haven't played the game <laughs> right uh, more than like ten minutes at Jamie's house one time. But like I've listened to some of the soundtrack. I'm like I'm gonna regret if I don't get this before it it's sells out. Most churches, it's, 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 they're it's on there. Lo- yeah. It's mostly low roar. It's basically a okay. low roar, a low low roar soundtrack. Uh, okay. Vibes and atmosphere yeah. out the wazoo. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I love this game. Cool. Uh, there will be an episode about it though, so I don't want to talk it's- too much. Uh, is there a PS5 patch incoming for There this probably thing? will be a port. Because I know for a fact the PC version runs everything so much better mm. that it, they'd be stupid not to even re I wonder like, how much re-issue. it is on Steam. Uh, it is, it's still 60. Okay. Uh, really? I just can't, I can't run it. No, I can't run it. Because uh, you can get it for like 20, 25 bucks, I want to say, now on consoles. Yeah, but that's consoles. Yeah. Uh, okay. Otherwise, I was I, I bought Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Uh, yeah, you talked. I think you talked about that. Yeah, Did I talk about it last time. Yep. But I played it over at Dylan's house, and he's right. The game's fucking awesome. It's really cool. The Bowser's Fury part, or the the Bowser's Fury part. Yeah, yeah 3D okay. World's fine. I didn't. I mean, it was pretty good. I'm Bowser's Fury Bob. is not the same game at all. No. Yeah. Right. It play. I mean, the just the way the camera functions is different completely. Yeah. Everyone, at least the podcast I listen to, and. Probably Dylan. Uh, I can't remember 
precisely, but yeah, we hung, they, we hung out like a week or two ago. They, yeah. People have said like this is like almost a prototype for a game that they're thinking about making. Just wanted to get the uh, reaction of people. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's probably like the best portable version of Mario I can yeah. imagine. A handheld. I think it's better than like Odyssey and handheld. I don't think it would look as good as the way Bowser's Fury. Just the scale of everything just feels right. Well, the truth about this one is that it's made on the 3D World engine still. Like, they, they didn't change the engine for this. They basically told a group of okay. their internal developers to make something with this to include with this other thing. So, okay. Play around with ideas. Like, this is truly, like, an idea maker's tool. I was under the impression it was the Mario Odyssey engine. But it, no, is it, no, no, okay. no, no, no. It's, it's, it's 3D World through and through. Uh, you still... Because 3D World is based on the idea that they wanted to do a 3D Mario with the 2D side scrolling options, like yep. NES options. So you have basically have two buttons that you're working with at all times. Gotcha. In Odyssey, obviously, you have Cappy. You have a lot of other things you can do. But this one, mm -hmm. just by the books, which actually makes it a better pure platformer than almost anything I think I've played in a while. Uh, you're on these series of islands. Bowser's a giant creature that wants to destroy shit. And but you can go Super Saiyan Cat, which is really great Saiyan for Saiyan many Cat. nerds. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I would, yeah. That's, that's the kind part of I'm sick. interested in. That part's okay. That part's okay. Everything's, you, a, everything's a cat like, in that game. Everything is a cat, even the enemies. Wow. But Josh is allergic to cats. He is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, what have you been playing? <laughs> yeah, Josh, what have you been playing? That's hilarious. Guys. Business owner? Yeah, I've not played anything i actually had so many days where i was like oh i'm just dying to sit down crack a beer and just start something mm -hmm. i have the i, I want to play uh i want to start uh ghost of tsushima yep i want to start terminator resistance um kind of an under radar terminated under, resi terminator, terminator resistance terminator resistance there was Is that a the christian bale <laughs> No. no, this was a. I think it was like an indie release. Oh, good for you! It, it it's not the like it's not visually the best like audio during story, but I guess it's like the best Terminator game ever made, hands down. I'm a big fan of the first two. T2 the arcade game. Not bad. It's pretty okay. Not bad. Universal Studios Cinema Experience. Robocop versus Terminator. No, I mean actually, uh, Limited Run pretty is shitty. actually releasing a, a pre-order for a PS5 release, re-release of it. Because okay. it's doing well, kind of, and if the American copy is going for a lot of money now, did but you? I snagged mine from England. Did you see that Doom Eternal's got a DLC coming? Yes. Isn't yes. it the second DLC? Yeah, I've not gotten the first yet. I, I will. Okay, I wasn't sure if you were like pumped to get back in there. I I am. I just I I've been pretty busy with life, so I really want to play some stuff. But mm -hmm. life is great. Life. Meanwhile, I've been in a VR headset for over four right. hours. <laughs> you, you, I you, like you my take VR. It up, I and like then my... it's just like yeah. I'm, I'm just like pranking you. I've got like a uh, full like gray beard, and I'm just like <laughs> it, it looks <laughs> real. <laughs> That'd be really great. It's like everything looks real. It, yeah. When you put like, like I've like gotten really good. In its inception. <laughs> I've gotten really good at like peeking out of that because when you're in the headset, when when I'm like home alone, like a lot of the times. It's it is spooky. It is you hear, you hear a bump, and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Several times during Resident Evil 7, I literally had to just be like, is someone, or I look at my cats, and I'm like, are you trying to fuck with me on purpose? <laughs> and the cat's like, I'm a fucking cat, dude. How long does it take you to adjust when you come out of the headset to like get your vision like from not moving around? Uh, the, I mean, happen? my vision doesn't move around. It's mostly just like the three-dimension like perception in my brain. Okay. And like the real world is just like readapting to not looking at a screen. Yeah. I don't know. It yeah. is... It, it, it does whip you. Yeah, it whips it you. Does, it does me. Plus, yeah. in the mor like in the morning, there's like a moment where I'm like re getting used to like how my hands function again. Oh <laughs> it's, god, it's weird. And I'm fingers. I'm Not definitely a glowing ball. Yeah, I've, I've jumped in very hard, so I'm excited to get through RE7 and retire for a while. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, Josh. Oh, Tom. How what do you want? Oh, Josh. <laughs> I think it's time you take us to Turtle Island. Oh, uh, Turtle Island. The Turtle Club. Yeah, so there was a game that was announced. There was a game. Right? A, a trailer. A uh, trailer, teaser, yeah. Uh, Just the last there's week? There's no yeah. date yet, but it's a teaser. Uh, we heard the TMNT theme song. 
played by Mike Patton. From, yes. Uh, Mr. Bungle and Faith, Faith No, no More. More. I love Mike yeah. Patton. Uh, I did not know that was I Mike Patton. So people either. are like, did you know that was Mike Patton? I'm like, like, how the fuck do you know that? I mean, because I couldn't tell by listening to it. Yeah, me neither. Uh, and I listened to it again today. I'm like, oh, yeah. This, this is, is fucking Mike, rad. This is Mike Patton. That's fucking So great. we're talking about uh, a new game that was announced called TMNT Shredder's, Shredder's Revenge. Revenge. And... I think as we were just kind of like all of us texting you, hey Josh, did you see this game? Uh, I'm sure <laughs> hey Josh, hey Josh, you see this turtles thing? Because I every time I see like the turtles logo anywhere, I text right, you. Josh, see this? <laughs> I, I think that got us to <laughs> they got underwear, dude. Whoa, fuck! <laughs> you can wear this on your butt. <laughs> right. I, I think that got us to just, just kind of chatting about turtle games in general and maybe some hot takes. And yeah. This is your time that's to some, shine, ladies some. and gentlemen. I present to you. Our turtle expert, wow. Josh Miller. Jewish. Oh, hi, everybody. I like Ninja Turtles a lot, and I'm here to talk about that with you. Um, I think that was your first line on the podcast. I'm, like, I'm <laughs> yeah. Josh. I like Ghostbusters and Turtles. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you want like from turtles. me? I still am Josh. And you, you have are. said you like Turtles more than Ghostbusters, correct? Uh, oh, bad. shit. Wow. You're a naughty boy. Record. I'm feeling like spanking tonight. Oh. <laughs> I was surprised. I like that. By the, the, the trailer... It's like looks three quarters of the trailer is just yes. really good animation. Yeah, was, I, I thought it was oh, almost wait, an, anim, like an animation trailer. I was like, this is great. They're getting a new cartoon. Yeah, was so I know. Away. It's I was a laser disc game. It was, was a minute like, and a half the... of animation, yeah. and it was a half, like twenty five seconds of uh, a little tiny speck of beat 'em up. It just showed like their models, and yeah. I was like, I'm in. You got me because clearly you're going for the nostalgia factor of the right. old games. Mm. What is this green? Drink. Is it St. Patty's Day? I know. Ooze. Well, I mean, it is like, let's pretend it's a little bit of mutagen ooze. Oh, it has shit. a very ecto cooler ish kind of a Roman flavor. Yeah, it does. Yep. Mm. This is a fruit cup style fruit cup. Uh, beer from Dimensional uh, Brewing Company out of Dubuque, Iowa. It, D- Ooh, Dubuque wow. is Italian. <laughs> We weren't, we're, we, we weren't wowing at Dubuque. We sipped the beer there. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Dubuque. So, Ooh. so wow, this beer is wow. called She Only Wants Me for My Grinch Juice. Blue raspberry, <laughs> mango, tangerine, lemonade. Um, it is green. Yeah, and it's green. Um, it's now, Tom, easy. I know you don't like sours, but this doesn't... This just tastes like it good tastes, vodka in an ecto-cooler. <laughs> it kind of has an ecto-cooler-like flavor. Yeah. The yeah. tangerine. Yeah. I'm not... Yeah, I'm you're not, not saying it's not horrible. On it? I'm, oh, jeez. I'm not. It's just not Tom. Josh's style. I'm sorry. Or I wish Tom's I didn't style. Give him any. Same thing. <laughs> Tom mostly just likes Diet Mountain Dew. Honestly, this is yeah. Well, I mean, this which tastes is all... a citrus beverage. It's very funny. This does taste a lot like Diet Mountain Dew. You're not uh, wrong, but there's just yeah. I don't you, know. You don't like how don't much better it is than Diet Mountain Dew. I well, Tom Diet Mountain Dew is the worst soda known to man. That's not true. No, it is true. No, that's not true. Have you had Fago? No, actually, those like weird ranch mist. sodas are the worst. Well, I guess diet soda. You are joking. Well, I, I well, like... I haven't soda in a couple of years, so... So what are turtles? Uh, they're amphibious. Well, maybe we should ask uh, uh, one Michael... Uh, they're not mammals. What's that guy's name? Michael Bay? Michael Angelo? He, yeah. Um, Michael oh. Bangelo? Yeah, turtles are uh, based... I'm sure you that know, was a joke. When uh, Daredevil... Uh, had his accident, uh, a little bit of that uh, ooze mutagen yeah. fell into the sewer, mm-hmm. and uh, the magic happened. Is I this would say. is this real? Yeah. They're, they're, they it's really happened. Did you real Deadpool's like, Daredevil? Daredevil. Oh, yeah. Daredevil. So Kevin Daredevil Eastman gets blinded. So and Peter Laird yeah. are huge uh, uh, Jack Kirby, uh, you know, Daredevil fans. Yeah, yeah, like and that they they. Legibly tied that in. They to should. Story. Man, well, they were, I forget they're in the MCU. Also, tur- turtles? No, uh, maybe or, someday. Turtles. Well, they're in like the, the Marvel. Disney series. will own them one day. Turtles is IDW Comics right now. Uh, yeah, yeah and, and they're not tied with anybody, but they do work with. They have worked with uh, DC. Batman. So wait, they started off from yeah. Daredevil. They're in Injustice, but now yeah. they they've. They're kind of outside of both licenses. So, well, no, they, they never were. They were never legally tied yeah. to Daredevil. So, so there were parallels. Maybe I can explain it a little more succinctly. It, it is a situation where there were so many of these comics being produced in the mid '80s that were super tied to like this grim, dark, gritty Frank Miller esque thing that was going on at the time. Yeah, like the Dark Knight Returns. Zack Snyder got very excited. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. So. First of all, Zack Snyder never gave a shit. 
He ever. just wanted to make a movie where pretty things happened. Forget about it. Uh, but <laughs> Forget but about it. Eastman and Laird, from what I understand, they wanted to parody it. And they wanted to take yes. all the things that were like being like pushed on kids at the time, like like mutants and because mutants were in like the Dark Knight Returns and like oh, but they got to be teenaged and cool and they got to <laughs> yeah. be like this and Hip that too and radical exactly. Ninjas are hot right now. And so it was kind of a play. Honestly, yeah, it was kind of a play on that whole entire idea. Um, There's a lot of play. Yeah, Splinter. Yep. Stick. Turtle player. Stick from uh, Daredevil. Yeah. yeah. Um, shoot. The foot. The hand. Mm-hmm. The, foot the, clan. the foot clan. Yeah. The hand. Yep. That's where it comes from. Um, well, and there's probably like 17 other things. But there's there's a lot. Some turtle yeah. fan you are. Come on. Shredder. It's Wolverine. Like grabbing these it. off. Dude, it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's. No, but yeah, that's uh, that's like you. the background of you. them. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. That's They're originally a car- comic book. I knew uh, that. And I knew that they... To Speaking blow of, you away with my vast knowledge that they all used to have like the same, uh, I want to say it was red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same red mask. And uh, from everything I've seen of those early comics, they are glorious and dark and a little more edgy. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, the I, first I, I, comic, they yeah. yes, asked Shredder to perform uh, what, Seppoku? Her- Harakiri? Seppoku? Yeah, yeah. A cesarean. So, Seppoku is the... Uh, yeah, where you gut yourself, baby. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, it's there have been several different uh, comic renditions, and IDW is fucking killing it. It is great, and uh, it really sparked a resurgence in Ninja Turtle comics when uh, they killed uh, they killed Donatello. They uh, Bebop bashed his uh, shell with a sledgehammer. My God! And number forty-four things that like no one should ever have to think about. And that's died. Donatello getting violently murdered by yeah. Bebop. Yeah, yeah. Like, Donatello kill, actually died. Kill it, Michelangelo. It sparked uh, Ninja it's Turtles Donatello, has been. Man. I'm pretty sure the number one independent comic ever since. And even Last Ronin, the recent new Turtles series, which uh, I read the first issue of. Yeah, uh, it's supposed to be definitely a darker take. It's supposed and, to be like an alt future. Yeah, and uh, hmm. yeah, exactly. Um, one turtle's left, and uh, Venus who is it? You find out at the end of the first comic. Yeah, it's Venus. Yeah, it's Venus to my well, Who else would it be? Where does Vanilla Ice fit? In the <laughs> it's where? early. Okay, Tom. sorry. All right, he will need a sidekick, <laughs> but it's kind of cool. The rest of the turtles kind of like in his head, like talk to him, like he's you know he's imagining that you know Leonardo's guiding him or mm-hmm. or Michelangelo's. Be like, yo, go to this pizza place. You just revealed who it was then. Uh, maybe it was no, maybe didn't. it was Danny actually, from I, Turtles. I, actually, 1. I didn't. No, you're um, no. I I think I remember who it was, but um. Yeah, but uh, I mean, y'all should know. Y'all will know. But that is the number one. That was the number one comic at the time when that was released. Josh, did your love affair with the turtles start with the original uh, comic book series, or did it come no. with the original animation? It was animation. I even had comic. I had number one of the, uh, the animated uh, series comic, though. But yeah, obviously, when I'm, I was born in 84, that's when the comic came out. The original comic. 84? Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah. I can, I can imagine little two-year-old Josh in diapers carrying some dark-ass comic books around <laughs> yes. his house. Right, yes. Yeah. Like, this ain't metal enough. <laughs> <laughs> it just throws it away. The, the nurse caught you in the uh, comic book as you were coming out. He's pouring craft beer into his own. But right. shit, those early comics are skyrocketing right now with COVID collecting going yep. on. COVID I collecting. have a third print of uh, number one. I'm gonna. Uh, it's in good shape. I'm totally getting that. Graded, you can get it graded and minted. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get that cash flow. I gotta take that cash while it's there. Open another yeah, drafty seller with it. Sure, no, I got like several comics. The Raphael series is going for a lot, or the, the one off of micro series with Raphael. Different, like, I found dude, I found a fifth print a few weeks ago at a local comic con. Five bucks for a fifth print that's going for a couple hondo, not graded. Yeah, it, it, I'm no, no, no. no. So yeah, gotta, those, gotta the, the early this. early comics are worth quite a bit. Were Eastman and Laird much involved in the original? Like, because it got pretty zany, wacky with the original yeah, cartoon. Yeah, well, definitely had to say they still wanted it to be a certain point of like you know they you wanted the two they wanted you know they wanted it to be fun still obviously still market to children mm-hmm. and I I don't know if they had they I don't know if they're the ones that I don't think they originally 
uh, redesigned them. No, that might have been playing. They, they could, they couldn't have. His art no. style is just yeah. too. It, his, like well, it's a very, ways. it's a very dark. Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. very like Frank Miller, like Frank Miller again. Yeah, Sin I, yeah. City type Sketchy-ish. of thing. There's that one episode on the toys that made us, right? On the turtles, it's and really that, good. It was pretty good because they had Laird and Eastman on there, and they kind of had a falling out for a long, long, long time. Long time. Yeah. And uh, I think Laird gave up his rights. It was one of them. Fuck, what was it? Uh, maybe Eastman gave up his rights and then bought back in. It, it was something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I knew it a long time. Eastman ago. Eastman married Julie Strange. But I think Laird totally blew it. Like mm-hmm. I think Eastman sold the majority rights to Nickelodeon. Smartest movies ever made. Yeah, yeah. Those shows are like legitimately. I watched a few seasons of. Uh, the early 2010s one? The 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. actually really, really well it's done. Really I well didn't made. like the art originally, but man, it mm-hmm. there's dark episodes in that too. And you can tell who makes those made that series. Understands. A lot of people were real, real turtle fans. I bet. Well, I yeah. They argue, brought back characters. Well, I think outside of the, the, the couple of Michael Bay films, most of the media that's been put out turtles-wise... Has been pretty solid. There's that live action series, which wasn't <laughs> hot. Okay, wait. I'm really walking this back. Because now I'm also remembering they did the live music tour. Oh, my uh, God. We're coming out of our shells. I was there, man. The original... <laughs> okay. Hell, yeah. Josh. Fuck you, Disney. I now. Josh, saw it. Josh. <laughs> How old were you? And describe the experience of going to out of out of our Dude. shells. I was 24. <laughs> Brought me out of my shell, let me say. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> um, man. Put it away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was an experience. It was awesome. It was so cheesy. And Shredder, even as a kid, I knew that sh- the guy who played Shredder looked like he just made that made the helmet <laughs> hey. with like a like a Coors Light case <laughs> and, uh, and like aluminum aluminum foil. Yeah. Right. And he's like. It was a lot like cheesy music. It got and cold stuff. and the mountains started rap glowing. is crap. Yeah, I hate music. Yeah, so it's like good. wow, you really so just good. wing that. <laughs> that like he should have someone write out the song next time. He didn't have a script at all. He's like, I I can do this. I hate guy. script. Yes. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> We're looking at a We're picture good. of the helmet it's here, got the folks. Undertaker eyeliner. Oh my gosh, it it's is not brilliant. Even a traditional samurai. <laughs> yeah, thing. that's it like I don't know what samurai is you. Yeah. What oh, it's so he could project. Oh, uh, yeah. To me, it's kind of <laughs> like uh, Mac and um, uh, Always Sunny. I'm going for gasps. It's like yeah. a contagion yeah. mask. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, a COVID face shield. With it was like an experience. Pseudo hazmat. Yeah. There's actually uh, one of the guys that did that, I believe, worked on Siren Live. I can't remember his name. He's like, or it was, it was, he, it was he like can't. Saturday Night Live. He was a very side yeah. guy, but he's done stand-up comedy. He's worked on so many TV shows. He's like, yeah, I was, I, I forgot where I saw this interview. He's like, yeah, it was oh, weird. Yeah. I performed on top of a building in New York City or uh, on, like on a, on a restaurant. And, it's ringing a bell. Uh, yeah. And I forgot who it was, man. Uh, it, it's hilarious, though. I remember as a kid, uh, I was voracious with my love for the turtles and... When my parents got me the VHS for coming out of their shells, I remember putting it on. I'm like, I don't think this is what I like, but it's still got the turtle, like got people in turtle costumes. So I'm like, this is good enough for now. Okay. And I wound up just watching the whole thing multiple times, but I'm like, this isn't what I like about the turtles. Let's get this clear. I got to watch it. Never seen it. Oh it's my gosh! Good, if we're awesome. a music guy, you love it. We hey. could have some drinks and we laugh and be like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. yeah. Splinter has a song called "Skipping Stones" and it's uh, torture. It's too emotional. It's yeah. Too oh emotional. god, it's I can't horrible. It. But I'm Pizza Power, songs. that shit is amazing. Which Ooh. is the music played at the end of Turtles in Time when you beat it on Super Nintendo, I believe. Yeah. Oh, it's a. Uh, I was listening to it all day today. <laughs> I had the Turtles in Time playing in the background. Dun, so, dun, um, it's dun, actually, dun, dun. Yes. Just it's like a, a 20 a second joint, snippet like, of it. Uh, uh, yeah. that's, that's a great jam. Yeah, People I was huge into Turtles too. So I'm glad we have this whole like <laughs> something to bring us all together. Well, I'm, I'm curious about the appeal because I actually wasn't a huge Turtles fan. Oh, I take that back. Well, we're going to beat it into you, Dylan. I mean, that's <laughs> fine. I like the Ninja Turtles. I've played several of the games, not to completion, but I'm always curious about the way that it was built coming from it now. There is a sense of irony to it, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering where the genuinity exists within that. Well, where where was it like? Was it just that it hit you at the right point in time in your life, or was it literally just like these are the concepts? 
this is it for me. They're, they're four brothers who are about sticking together, family right. first. Yep. They like to have fun. They like to kick ass. Uh, yeah. And they protect the city. Against Plus, the, they like against the bad okay. guys. Plus, they like pizza. Pizza, pizza is very important for kids. And, <laughs> and me. <laughs> I mean, it's. I haven't grown out of pizza, guys. I, no one can. I don't think that maybe they realized when they were making the original comic book how it could be pushed towards kids because it is almost perfectly designed. Those like the original animation is designed for like this is pure joy for children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is kind of awesome how they did come up with it as a just fucking around. They're just they had their Mirage Studios, aka they, I think they shared an apartment together in Jersey. Yeah, and they were just doodling, drawing, you know, doing their thing, and they made a. Couple this one of does things. machines, and then yes. all of a sudden they just this, they just made this one leads. Well, Peter Laird drew a Ninja Turtle. And he looked goofy as shit. <laughs> and then Kevin Eastman's like, well, here's mine. And then they just started, they just worked off each other and just they started iterating. piecing a story. And they did his Turtles are slow. This is funny. Yep. And then they actually made a, a full book. And 45 book. minutes later, <laughs> yeah. they had well, Then you're crying at a splinter monologue. They released it. Uh, yeah. Unique that they released it in that larger size. Which Graphic yeah. novel size never, yeah. never happened back then. Yeah, mm-hmm. but. It was uh, always floppies. Well, they did that, and uh, man, I wish I had a number one print. So you when I when I got that. my third print, I paid 150 bucks for it. Why mm-hmm. actually? That it's, was a good investment. It's worth around under six to 1,200 bucks. Yep. Yeah, not yeah. graded. I uh, get that. Shit the graded. first print, people have that on eBay graded. You're talking the fifty thousand dollar range. That's crazy. That's insane, man. People yeah. are fucking. Well, e- eBay is really hard to judge pricing off of because everyone's you'll get sold for whatever. But yeah. there's several mm-hmm. around that price. Sure. Yeah. More, yeah. I, like uh, three. But. I got into the turtles. Uh, I think it was around like ten or eleven when they really hit. When the cartoon hit, and I know like. You said, oh boy, April and Neil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you didn't. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. I actually didn't watch a lot of it. Dude, the um, yellow suit. Imagine so, just unzipping it a little bit. I think the appeal. I watched the porn with <laughs> April O'Neil, the porn star, where she played. You messaged her, right? No, that, that was me. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. I don't like it. <laughs> Do you, I wait. hate it? Well, you, I don't know. I you messaged the me. porn star asking about the movies, right? This was an ironic thing because <laughs> I, I came across her as a turtle phantom in a million different turtle groups on social media. And that uh, popped up. I'm like, okay, I so gotta see this So you are the reason shit. I see much, so much Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Back shit. Back to the porn star he's yeah, asking go, about the turtles. Yeah. So, and then I come across that. And then they, like, it was like later that week they announced, uh, I followed her on Twitter. And then um, <laughs> they announced, I, I might have been where I saw on Twitter that they announced. So I'm mm. like, well, this is gonna be fun. I'm gonna ask April O'Neil. Which it was like the first like ten minutes or something. I'm like, I'm gonna ask April O'Neil, the porn star, how she feels about Megan Fox being <laughs> made the April O'Neil. And she has responded basically, yeah, uh, like the horse from Ren and Stimpy. No, sir, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. And this, <laughs> the, this is you can't follow that up. <laughs> what do you got? Just, go ahead. I know I can't follow. Segue. I was Sasha Gray likes Splinter. <laughs> yeah, Sasha Gray. She's she more likes of a splinter anything. Gal. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. No, but uh, God, that was good. <laughs> I just have to acknowledge that just for a minute. Um, no, I she can handle. I ju- because it, for some reason I always played Ninja Turtles on the playground, but I never mm-hmm. like because the other kids are playing. Connecting. I was kind of a Power Rangers kid. Yeah, yeah, me that was, too. That was kind of what followed. Yeah, it, it was what followed. I, maybe I was a little too young for all of it. Like I just missed the cutoff. Because yeah. I would see repeats, uh, but I would never. It was never just like I gotta get all the I, Ninja Turtle toys. Th- there was there was a, a time like I feel more, like it was more a around of like our, our age, where especially for me, Turtles and Power Rangers were discussed on playgrounds as who was better mm-hmm. all the time, and you were on one side or the other, and I was generally on the Power Rangers side, but I love both of them. Yeah, and um, Turtles was finishing its run. Yeah, the last series I think right exactly at the time probably. And, and, the, and the turtles have aged very well. The Power Rangers have aged. <laughs> Ooh, and it's fun though. Honestly, it's still fun. I still like oh the old ones. Yeah. It's got a different kind of. Well, it's got like a campiness, whereas the turtles still function as just like on many levels. The uh, the thing that uh, I think appealed to me as a kid growing up, like I said, I was like ten or eleven at the time, and there's something about the turtles that 
they were just slightly edgier than the cartoons that I had been watching back when cartoons were actually a thing on Saturday uh, mornings. And I don't know, like, you had merch everywhere as well. It was just a fucking toy box and all the kids bringing this shit to school. But there was something about the, the turtles themselves where each of them, their personalities, like, represented, like, a personal, like, a facet of like our young child mind you had the brooding mm-hmm. like Raphael the crazy you I know, get like, angry sometimes fuck you you had fun Michelangelo <laughs> and you know the party dude man party dude I, and like the Donatello nerd, nerdy was Donatello. always my favorite I'm like yeah. he's so smart he gets he likes computers I get so, it I think I that appealed draft. a lot that yeah that, <laughs> that that appealed a lot to uh myself for sure um but god damn it they were so huge well okay so then there's the original animated stuff and then there were the original comic books but the original film I don't know if you guys knew this, was the highest selling independent yep. film up until the release of Pulp Blair Fiction. Witch. Mm-hmm. No, independent film, indie oh, film, indie until film. Um, Blair Witch in 99. I didn't know it was Blair Witch, but yeah, I knew it was. Wow. And huge. Blair Witch was the most successful until Paranormal Activity hit. But the original Turtles film, whoever they like was in charge, like they kind of messed up in a really great way because Jim they Henson made the, was involved. Well, they made the movie dark and they followed the comics. They yeah. made it mm-hmm. like scary at times that rooftop battle was the end of the original that first the first shot of shredder it's in a warehouse this huge camera thing comes around gets the glare down his helmet yes and he's there trying to kidnap and manipulate children to be his like soldiers and eventually parents are like maybe we should get vanilla ice involved this is (laughs) yeah and let's not give him weapons in the end combat Uh, cold cuts but yeah the first movie i watched it not too long ago Still not bad. It's it, not bad. I would say it holds up completely. Voice. I would say. Well, then, but, okay, so then there's those things, but what really got, I think, a lot of us talking about it back then are the games. Absolutely. Absolutely. That NES game. This is pre, uh, I think, pre, pre the cartoon? arcade game. Um, Wait, which one? The original? Well, the, 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 the Ultra. Oh, yeah. The yeah, Ultra. Was, the arcade game. The, the arcade game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, right? Is yeah. that what they called it? Because that's the one that me and my brother played religiously. Oh, the original on NES. You the, mean. the original NES one was Man. not playable. Oh, that one. That was uh, my. Um, that was the crap out of the NES one. <laughs> that was the second good uh, Nintendo game that I ever bought with my own money, and uh, of course I I had to tell myself I liked it, and I think deep down inside I really do. I still have those fucking tunes in my head. You know when you're walking around the overhead map, but yeah, that I know that one. That fucking uh the the infamous swimming level um with the the, the algae that kills it was, you. <laughs> it was obviously made by people who had absolutely no idea what the turtles were. <laughs> It you is know, funny, well, some of the character characters sheets, and, and, and the then, bad guys in it, and then they actually did, like, there's rat kings galloping around, and yeah. and some, and the mousers. Uh, the mousers. But then I there's the some mousers. weird creatures, they're like, okay, I don't think better I... Better kill it. I don't think I ever... Uh, did I get the Shredder? I might have got the Shredder once. I never finished the game. It was uh I've only gone, ridiculously hard. gotten a little past uh, the, the dam. Okay. Um, yeah, getting I, past the dam is a big point. I, I actually yeah. did. I did. I was pl- I was playing my best game like maybe three years ago randomly, and I passed out with the controller in my hand. <laughs> and I, I was actually I had all my guys. I was kicking ass, and uh, I never yeah. went back to it. And I was too tired to continue. So I just shut it off. Sure. But, well, because they had the original NES one, which has not necessarily aged well, but then they also had the arcade one. The arc- that was- which came out at the same time, but then they made an NES port of it uh, yeah. a year later. Yeah. Well, and I that shit was hot. Let's not, let's not skip over the arcade one. They made the arcade one. The arcade one was the fucking game. I, I'm just coming from the NES side of it because I, I played on the NES. I get yeah. that. But, dude, the, the original oh, yeah. TMNT, the arcade game, you know... And you guys were red, you were in arcades at the time, probably. Yeah, I mean yeah. Shopko in Shopko and Watertown. Watertown. Every time we went, I'm sticking quarters in the turtles. And were you guys hanging out back then? We we it's very he possible like we played it together old. once. <laughs> Maybe Tom, you, you always were hanging out like with three year olds back then, right? <laughs> I mean, when you were seven. I, I, I play arcades. <laughs> I play Mortal Kombat against guys that are but like adults. And they're, they're, yeah. get my ass kicked. But, so <laughs> Didn't you care. had the you had their cartoon that was huge, and then you have this game that comes along that looks exactly almost like you're playing the cartoon. Those yeah. sprites and the movement, the colors, the movement was great. It's on the, fun, and it's, it's four players at the same side time. scroller beat 'em up. It's like a recipe for success. 
Plus, okay, the Turtles, there's four of them. Every Turtles game should be a four-player game if possible. Yeah. That's probably the first four-player game that I really experienced too much, like, that I can remember. I'm trying to think, yeah. At, up to that point. Uh, there might have been, like, Ivan Ironman Stewart with the four steering wheels. But Which doesn't really get me to the... To Turtles level. I don't even know what you just well, said. <laughs> sorry. Ivan so, Ironman Stewart. I, I remember yeah. that NES Stewart, game. You would understand D. Many no, times uh, with my brother, it was like we would get as far as we could, could never get through Shredder because Shredder was just like so powered. Uh, I think it was maybe three or four Christmases ago, maybe four or five, something like that. We skipped church for Christmas <laughs> and we beat fucking Turtles the arcade That's game. Awesome. And they came home and me and my brother were like, we can't brag about this, but we did it. We got to cash in the Pizza Hut <laughs> coupon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They let you skip church? But goddamn, that, yeah. that arcade. It was important. That arcade game, to me, I think just in the history of arcade games in general, was, I mean, that's got to be, it's got to be in like the top 10 of all time. I really like that game as well. As, also, it's right up there with Simpsons. Also, as important, as, mm-hmm. you know, as an important game in the uh, history of arcade games. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I mean, well, definitely my, the, my the beat 'em up. Is that the one that really brought beat 'em ups to another level? Or I like it's possible. Exploded them. Mm-hmm. It's exploded possible. Exploded them. Yeah. Think of how many fucking Chuck E. Cheeses and Rock of uh, like uh, like. Think of how many of those places just had one of those machines in them. Right. Every single one had them. Absolutely. And it wasn't even a question. It I was wonder like, how many were if produced. You didn't, if you so didn't many. have one and kids showed up. Even Jeff the seller has one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if, if kids had shown up to one of these things and had been like, where's the fucking turtles machine? They would have gotten lynched. <laughs> like, right. So yeah. this, yeah, it's because of that game. Why we're freaking out, in, or people are freaking out in 2021 over the um, Shredder uh, Returns. The Shredder Returns. Yeah. Looks so yeah. good. And a, and a couple of other reasons, I think. There but are a lot of reasons to like Megan this Fox. announcement. Megan Fox and maybe the fact that the last few Turtle games didn't really resonate or hit that. What What was... I saw... I was on the, Manhattan. So just like, well, I was, yeah. Was that the last one? I was, was alright. Well, I was on the Xbox Series X looking... Or maybe it's the PlayStation 5. I was looking for what games are available to purchase and download at the moment. And there was only one, and it was... What would you say? Ma- Mutants, Mutants in Manhattan. Mutants in Manhattan. And it said not currently available. Maybe it's just they don't have like the next Curious. gen oh, update maybe they for it. Yeah. Licensing. But I thought it looked pretty cool. So that was made by uh, the ones that made Transformers Devastation. Yeah, Platinum, yeah. Platinum. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought yeah. it looked pretty cool. The trailer, it, anyway. It's all right. So did I. It's all right. It, it is a. It is a. I'll get through it. and I'll play it. Play through it. It's not bad. It's not great. Okay. This came out at a point where Platinum had been doing a lot of licensed work. Transformers. Transformers. Legend of Korra. Yeah, uh, there were quite a few, and a lot of them did not fucking land. And they were very, uh, to my knowledge, I think they were they didn't have the biggest budgets for these games. They no. were just kind of some of it felt very lazy, repetitive. I mean, when I saw the trailer for that Platinum game, I was like, oh wow, this looks. I was impressed. Fucking good. Yeah, me too. And then when I started reading the reviews, and I think you played it, and you didn't. I have it. So I played it. It yeah. was you no, know, it was it was it's worth a playthrough if you like the binge play a game without thinking too much yeah. about it the art design i thought was good. some of the yeah. art is really cool um but overall it, it misses so i mean there i mean there's dudes in manhattan and then there was one arcade game and those are the most recent ones and we oh, played the Raw arcade Thrills. game that game is fucking awesome that's the oh, one yeah, we beat gonna, out wait, at drafty cellar yeah. right? Go, gilbert t- 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 tell, uh, tell yeah, our audience from, about it and me so the Raw Thrills game, the thing about Raw Thrills is these games don't get released on console. Mm-hmm. They they want that exclusive. Uh, Eugene Jarvis, yeah, they want company. to be exclusive. You know, you got to play this game. You got to get on the arcade machine. You got to mm. find one and play it. It's a mammoth. Um, it but was a it was really well game. done. It, it it's a it's a beat 'em up based on the 2012 cartoon series. But there's a lot of tie-ins to like the original series too, like because you face both versions of Krang, the '87 cartoon. Um, the, the and, amazing design. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the body. Oh, yeah. And then you also face... <laughs> if Josh gave That's my only Krang. Pounds. That's my Krang. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, you, you face, you face Gilbert Godfrey Krang, which mm-hmm. is awesome as well. Yep. Uh, but like, it's a big game, machine. It's fun. I, I don't know how much money I pumped into it. Um, yeah, I played through that at least three, four times probably. Wow. As yeah. a business owner, you... You rent the machines that oh, are we there, work, some of them? We work with the vendor. Okay. So we split some profits. So So at least you didn't have to... Yeah. All I got, those quarters, I got some, some of them are coming back to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Worth it. I actually 
would like to bring it back sometime. You should. But uh, yeah, it's it's a fun game, and each uh, character has a really cool like. I forgot. I was like, you hit the pizza button. And it's like a power up. Oh, you, you rack them up by doing certain things and destroying oh, like certain things. Button. That sounds cool. Yeah, it, and they're like crazy. You just take you take out the waves of everybody oh, shit. on the on the page or on, on page on, on the screen. Uh, it's like a screen blast. Yeah, it's like yeah. you you build up a meter and then like yep. you hit it and then you use it strategically. It yeah. really it for a beat 'em up modern. It's probably the closest I've had to bring it back. That to that old school feeling, do like, you, uh, like you, big sensation in playing it. Now, do you have Game Pass now? I don't know if you. I do, yeah. Uh, Streets of Rage 4 is a game you I, would love to play. I do have that. That's actually, very I have, good. I, I got a copy for PS4. It's, it's actually my favorite side scrolling beat em up at the moment. I need to play a little more. I really actually like Cobra Kai as a beat em up. Do or I keep die. Hearing stuff about it. It's it's like uh, there's many ways in the movement, the stance, and the weaponry. Like it's like a real souped up final fight. That that intrigues me because final fight might be my favorite series out of all of them. I, think, I guarantee you're gonna love it. Mike and, Hagar, and I just if, love if, especially being if you've seen the series. But I love being Mike Hagar. I like swinging my. Big <laughs> you ass look like Mike me. Hagar. Thank you. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Mario, that's I don't nicest. like that. Hagar, thank you. That's the nicest thing I've ever... Well, I do like... Hagar's him. ripped as shit, though. Honestly, Mario is very He's Zangief charming. with a mustache. Mario's got, like, the chubby cheeks. There's, like, an appeal there. So Ma- I'm not going to not... Mario's that. got a lot of sex appeal. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, Josh, there were, like... There was the Turtles arcade game. There was... Turtles, Turtles in, time. in Time. And then the Manhattan Project. Now, those three all kind of play the same, right? Uh, on Nintendo... Uh, yeah, uh, Turtles in Time, Manhattan Project. Yeah, same style. They did add a few extra little tidbits on Manhattan Project. I know you, they had that flipping over you kind of a maneuver. <laughs> yeah, yep, you just I used Dantel's bow and, staff and, and threw him around. Him. But he, he did it with every weapon, I believe, which looked funny when he did his Asai. Because you're just stabbing but, a guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Ma- Manhattan Project's awesome, but there was no arcade for that. It'd be it really wasn't. cool to do that. I thought, yeah, I, my friend got that. And maybe we're going to get that. Maybe we're going to get some tidbits of Manhattan Project uh, in this new Shredder's Revenge. I bet there's some callbacks to you it. You know who made Shredder, this Shredder's Revenge? Did you guys Scott Pilgrim. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Scott Pilgrim versus the World, which yeah. is one of the best beat-em-ups I've played People I love should get that it in game. the past 10 years. I should get it. I've thought about good. it, but I'm like, uh, is it going to be just another like it's movie wonderful. tie-in? I, no, I've, also, I've also heard the Mummy Demastered is a really good game. The what? I heard so, too. The one the based mummy? on the Tom At Cruise movie. The movie. It's good. That's what I heard. People said like the game's actually really good. The game is very good. Yeah. 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 So Shredder's Strange. Revenge is made by Tribute Games, and uh, it's a collaboration between Tribute Games, who did that Panzer Paladin, and Dot Which I want to play. Who just recently did Streets of Rage 4. Um that came out last year. Oh, so sexy. So, yeah. They, they know their beat-em-ups for sure. There's going to be a lot of depth to this game. It's going to be hidden. You, I think that there's going to be an easier mode where you can just kind of roll through it. And then I think yeah. there's going to be a mode where they're actually like, no, you got to try a little. you got to learn the combos. So I hope there's more to it, honestly. It, it, I, the, what I watched, it looks like the same kind of style beat-em-up fighting. It actually looks like a downgrading graphics from the original arcade to me. It doesn't look like, say, a 16-bit. It looks like a 12 and a half bit Okay. Um, I I, but it's based on the same style art as the Scott Pilgrim games. It's not like Turtles in Time, but I think they're trying to rent... Like, it's not like Turtles Arcade, but they're obviously... Yeah. Mashing, they they're mashing like them both. Yeah. It, yeah, it didn't look aesthetically exact, but... Nothing wrong with a little change? No, but they are trying to evoke that... They're going for the extent. nostalgia there. Um, I did like the different run animations. People were pointing out like each turtle had their own, you know, different run. Like, like Donatello runs skips. really cool. Yeah, with the bow. Because <laughs> yeah. he's very cool. Spe- yeah, very cool. aerodynamic. Um, Spartan. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> there's so many... People shit. There's so many things they could do. Like, it'd be really cool to see him, like, take some, like, random, like, characters, like, some of the action figures that were never used in the cartoon or anything, mm-hmm. like Hotspot and uh, Scratch, which are... Figures that have never been used in any Ninja Turtle thing. That's but they so were bizarre. released. You could be just making and that they're stuff really up. expensive. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Those, like Scratch and Hot Spot, those are like seven hundred fifty dollars figures. You open one's a stupid Dalmatian. 
And then the other, the other is a stupid. I treated my cousin's turtle figure so poorly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I still have four turtle figures up next to my computer. I was able to get. I used to be very big into the action figures as a, as a kid, mm-hmm. and I have like detective or like undercover Raphael, and then I guy. have like. Uh, spaceman, somebody or other, I don't know. And then there's like samurai. Space Raph? Sure. Oh yeah. Is samurai. it the uh, the one with the trench coat as a part of it? There's a trench coat that's a part of it, and then there's like okay. underwater Michelangelo with like a shark biting him or something. So they released the uh, undercover figures at the very end of the figure cycle for the like that that Damn, generation of turtles. Expert. Yeah. I came across one at a local place that I picked up for four bucks. Nice. It's worth. 100 plus times as much. Well, I'm going to send you a picture later so you can tell me. <laughs> you should, yeah. I'll tell you what the value. Um, Josh, yeah. I got a question for you. I, I know my turtle stuff. So uh, the turtles had a lot of really great, like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and a couple Genesis games. They were stagnant for about seven years then, and then they reemerged with a string of GameCube and PS2 and Xbox yeah. games. I do want to say Hyperstone Heist on Genesis is awesome. Yes. It yeah. is different, though. You face Tatsu. That's cool. Tatsu, yes. Um, it's a bit of a remix. Me, Tatsu, uh, now lead. Turtles in Time. Less levels, longer levels. And then the, the crazy boss rebattle. You, you face them all. In a, boss rush? Yeah. Bo- Mega Man. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, but Josh, I want to ask yeah. you, uh, these like when they came back and started making games again for like the era with the GameCube games, did you play these? Were you excited for them? Um, I actually did. Well, you remember like the 2003 series that were mm-hmm. like a little more, it, that was actually That's a little darker I got into. too. Yeah. yeah. And it was actually pretty well done. But those games based on that were simple run around beat em ups. And mm-hmm. if you're into that kind of yep. stuff, you'll love it. They're, they're more 3D, isometric. right? No, yeah. they're top-down top down, isometric. Yep. Okay. Um, angled top-down, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, yeah, you just run around and you beat the shit out of the baddies. That's nice. That was Go the, those are the ones I knew. I remember being disappointed with... Uh, I was excited when I saw these coming, but I remember disappointed like, oh, it's two players? Because I think the, yeah. the first one was only two players, and I'm like, you're missing out on some big opportunities because here. Play, because of the PlayStation... Two. Well, the GameCube had four delicious ports. I understand. And the that. Xbox had four delicious ports. That wasn't what was selling, baby. <laughs> but it was on everything. Like, they were coming out for everything I for that era. I a lot of people that had those games when PS2 was relevant and stuff. They're fucking killer, and they follow the plot no of the cartoon quite of these a games. bit. Yeah. yeah. I remember being very excited back good. then because I'm a Turtles guy, you know? I have all of those. I have every single console release. Um, including tournament fighters NES, but uh, those games. Do you have wait every console release? Did you not have a, handheld? But did you I have, have a handful? Were you of collecting handhelds. for the GameCube, Xbox, or PS2? Uh, all sorts, because I have all the consoles. GameCube uh, ones are probably Game, worth some money right GameCube now too. GameCube has uh, Mutant Melee. Yeah, it's like a Smash Brothers or something like that. Yeah, not that good. Oh crap! I, I have it, but you it's, don't have you don't have the the groundbreaking 360 Connect one, do you? Where you can swing Donatello's bow staff. I don't think there's ever been a physical release. Okay. Actually, I, I saw a video of I'm that. Very, I, I showed yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Would you play it anyways? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would actually yeah. would play it without clothes on. It's connected. Naked I, just drinking beer on the connect. It wouldn't be my hand swinging if you know what I mean. Yeah. All those uh, nunchakus just swinging everywhere. No, you can't come in, honey. I'm busy. <laughs> um, I'm fighting the foot. You know what I'm doing. Uh, just a question to you guys and a question to Josh. With the trailer for Shredder's Revenge, I know that it was really tugging on those nostalgic heartstrings. Really and, tugging. And really, really tugging. Yeah. And, you know, pe- people going crazy, rightfully so. I mean, I'm excited to play it. but So much I, tugging. Yeah. I, I couldn't help <laughs> I but feel just that, think. Brad. Yeah, it's you great to go backwards. New. Yeah, ex- exactly. Maybe, like, maybe they're going to have new special moves. So I don't know. <laughs> like, are they using this game to cash grab? Kind of. Can't, well, yeah, but I think also fading. reset from the last few games to get people's uh, attention back. Attention back uh, to come up with something new after that, or I mean, I don't know. It, it could. Just what do be you a, think? Like, I'm well. It's probably going to be how successful is it, you know, and how much is it going to be brand new. Mm-hmm. Is it 
it's probably going to be a twenty dollars, thirty dollars game. They, right new. they haven't announced release dates no. or specifically what systems yet, have they? Or they haven't really released much no. of a gameplay trailer. No. Well, to me, sucks. to me, they're very much hiding behind those amazing teaser. animation because the animation drew me in to the point where I started questioning whether or not it was a game. Am I watching yeah. the, the right trailer? Because they don't show barely yeah. any gameplay till the very end, and then what they sh- they show is promising enough. But uh, agreed, I don't know. They're, they're not showing enough um, gameplay for me to be pumped on it. Uh, yeah. I, you know, people, everybody is asking me, like, oh, Josh, did you see this? I'm like, yeah. I don't mm. get as, as excited for things anymore. New movie, mm. I'm not jacked. You post pictures of you drinking beer ten times a day. <laughs> <laughs> and That's probably why. Dude, you had, like, your Instagram post the other day is, like, beer I'm drinkers of Instagram, ever. hashtag beer Instagram, hashtag I love beer more than anything. Something like that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. this is the cutest post I've ever seen. <laughs> If, it is. It's like if I posted pictures of me and Carly like that, it would melt her heart. Like, and it was just you and beer. <laughs> or she well, would dump you. you know, <laughs> you know how beer treats me and how how I feel about beer. You know, we had this close relationship. Yeah. yeah. That's, um, yeah. and yeah, yeah. But could, but your 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 excitement for the turtles has been tempered. Oh, not turtles in general. I mean, I. I'm like collecting shit like crazy. NECA is taking advantage of the fans like fucking bananas, yo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, NECA figures is selling out in seconds. The turtle yeah. fan base is fucking diehard more than ever. And there's a lot of new fans. Because you, of that, because of those and, 2000 series and uh, the they, every 10 years it seems to have a resurgence. That's the crazy. It really part. does. It's, uh, it's think, almost like clockwork. It's got a lot of staying power. They tried. They tried. A year or two back with Rise of the Ninja Turtles, where they severely redesigned uh, them. Yeah. Do you remember that one? I actually thought that looked kind of cool. I hear it's awesome. I, I watched one episode. They canceled and it. I, I, I watched know. one episode, and I'm like, oof. Oh. I didn't vibe with it at all. Mm-hmm. What do you think, think of the live action series? Um, but I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it through. People have told me it's fucking good. Did you like the live action series? Oh, it was so good. No, actually, I didn't even really ever watch that. Um I put on as a joke on YouTube the Ninja Turtles Christmas thing from that. Not the, okay. That's pretty bad. I remember as a kid, I'm like, oh, great. There's more stuff like the movies. And I remember being excited there was a the next fifth mutation. turtle. There was a fifth turtle and it was a girl. I'm like, Venus. this is cool. But everything else, I'm like, this show sucks. And Venus. I want it to be good. Uh. It's a what, girl named likes Venus de Milo. I, no, I think <laughs> I, I wish like have they used her character for anything else? Because uh, they could, they you, should, and they could. You know, they might have, they might have once in the new, like the 2012 series, they brought back a lot of characters in that. They even brought back uh, the gal from the original, um, the original Eastman and Laird run, who had like that weird wizard outfit or something. I actually never read those comics. I have them, but yeah, I was. They brought back so many random characters that I was like, holy shit, these guys are going more in depth than anybody has ever done since. Mm-hmm. So, Turtle. I mean, they might have brought her back. Turtles are so good. They are. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I, so no, I'm it? excited. I, ho- I hope it's good. Did the um, original Casey Jones, like Judith Hogue is April, th- those early movies. <laughs> oh, the original, man, is so good. Mm. The second one's just fun. I felt things for April O'Neil in that movie. Oh, yeah. And I was. And so did that. Mikey. Nope. I, I always thought from the first one and Splinter. I was no. I was never attracted to her. I wasn't yeah, as a yeah, kid, but as an adult, I'm like Paige oh, yeah. but She's still cool. Paige she's April yeah. yeah. in the movie, and the second one. Megan she's Fox gonna, is just Megan Fox, though. She's not April O'Neil. Yeah, she's just Megan Fox. That's the craziest yeah. part, though. Shouldn't yeah. like it. Here I am. <laughs> yeah, the Fuck. new movies. Not a fan. The Bay movies. Uh, the mm. the second one had enough silliness with some of the designs like Rocksteady and Bebop were fun Krang was fun Casey Jones was a fucking joke though. oh my god they made him into a police officer yeah. who was rollerblades I'm like this is bad he's supposed to be a fucking vigilante he's That's... a clean cut oh his acting was garbage I will never watch Arrow because he was the worst acting I've probably mm. seen in a long <laughs> honestly, time honestly he literally just played his character and isn't so, isn't Johnny dude, Knoxville Donatello I re- <laughs> or he's Leo Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he, uh, shit. Yeah, Leo. Yeah. I don't know. Um, maybe in the first one? Great casting. But, uh... I think he's in both of them. 
Honestly, not, it's not a bad casting call. He's he's, he's got a good not voice. A bad actor. No, yeah. worked for voice actor. It doesn't matter. Oh, well, yeah, Corey it's Feldman is the original it's the Donnie. Bay film it doesn't matter. But uh, and of course, our friend of the podcast, uh, Anthony Marquez, was in a turtle's outfit for some of the movies. That's right. He was in uh, three, or I think he was in three as like one of the stunt turtles. Okay, so he was one of the turtles. <laughs> Bring in the, the stunt right. turtle. Give right. uh, yeah, me the stunt turtle. Me. So next time we get him on the podcast, we're fucking grilling him about turtles. This stuff. is all of turtles. Yeah. Somebody, I did want to shoot. Well, I forget the name of the game. Somebody made a recent uh, free download of a like a turtles like like paradise game. Okay. Based on the original NES. Paradise. Game. Like like I'm just like everything like, oh, you want. Like every homebrew? character. Yeah. You can be April O'Neil. You can be Yo uh, Yo Jimbo. Yep. You can be fucking Casey. Well, Jones. Yo Jimbo's from a completely different. Yeah, like, but but they're serious. tied together. Yo, Jimbo and and Eastman and Laird. Yeah. Sometimes Eastman yeah. and Laird, yeah, they yeah. had that kind of relationship. Yo, Jimbo. <laughs> Yo, Jimbo. That's a pretty damn good book. Um, it's a bunny who's a samurai. I know. Oh, I, I know. Yeah, I've okay. seen the movie. Yeah, come on. And the summon. Uh, no, we're talking. Uh, well, I know. I'm talking about the Kurosawa. I saw the original Kurosawa. Oh, movie, Yo, Jimbo. Is, you yeah. mean uh, fistful of dollars? He just gave me like a. Yay. I gave him the old fist. <laughs> um, okay, it's called Rescue Palooza, and it looks amazing. It's like a, a fan, yeah, fan, a fan game. Dream. Yeah, it just it looks well made. Um, I don't know what to say about it, but or is it uh, just playable on PC? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. If it, you get a chance to play it, play it. It looks amazing. In the Injustice game with the Turtles DLC, are all four Turtles separate playable characters? Yeah. Okay. It was just like all four of them were. When you do when you yeah. do your super move or whatever the hell it's called, you do it all together. Like all the Turtles take you. Out. I, I forgot that was Injustice because I was like walking around today. I'm like, that was fucked up that they put them in Mortal Kombat. I never saw their <laughs> fatalities. Uh-huh. Uh, my favorite was Hellboy because he looked like Mike Mignola's <laughs> design. I'm like, they put Hellboy in here. Only reason I own the game. I'm nice. a huge yeah. Hellboy fan. I'm not a huge DC guy. I like Hellboy. What'd you think of the newest Hellboy? Awful. Yeah, I heard it wasn't. It good. could have been good. I think there were David Harbour's of... good casting. I think. Oh, he was great. Yeah. Actually, he's maybe the best part of it, in my opinion. Yeah, but because him and like Stranger yeah, I was looking Things, forward even, to that. Yeah. Doug Jones. Doug Jones. I didn't bother I don't watching, watching it. it. Yep. Don't. Yep. It's Gotta not worth Doug it. Mila Jovovich, mm-hmm. though. I don't know what it is with like slender evil women, but I'm just like, <laughs> God. So it's like her and Kate Blanchett. So, <laughs> Kate Blanchett, Mila Jovovich, and Megan Fox are just three ladies that you don't know why, but they just do it. Yeah. It's not even like that obtuse. It's just not how I usually am. Yeah. So, <laughs> where do the turtles go from here? Let's bring this home. Well, we're coming out of their shells, too, I think the most obvious You think that's, thing. yeah. <laughs> I think it's we coming could, out coming out well, of your let's homes. let's start writing, Brad. We could play all yeah. of them. We, we, we can, could. Uh, we, we can pitch we this. We could fucking do it. Um, so, where we go from here, let's hope the, the game is, is a success. I've been waiting forever to get a like a more open world, uh, mm-hmm. something like Arkham Asylum or Spider Man version of Turtles. I'm with you. Why the fuck not? It it, it, it a would sewer go... system that you can like fast travel around sure. town and stuff. Precisely. Just that combat would feel so good. I mean, Spider Man already has a city laid out. Yeah. Yep. That Arkham. Come on, guys. Yeah. Oh, Actually, that's Marvel. I just want him to. I just want him to find. To settle down with a nice mutagenic turtle lady, and she can poop out a big egg. Yeah. And then they can have weird, yeah. like new <laughs> proto, like. Okay, but um, mutants uh, reproducing. I don't know if it would be viable. That's mostly just clones. It's like mutants zebras can't. and horses. Zorses can't really uh, reproduce generally. Yeah, it's like that's a witcher. Not the, that, that's not the. That's not the same thing at all. <laughs> well, it's like. <laughs> We're in new territory here on whether or not they could reproduce. Well, I mean, it's it's. It, I mean, it's not mutant. But mutant you want creatures who, can. Always so who reproduce. should have a kid first? Oh, who's the most responsible? Probably Mikey yeah. wants to have a kid the most. I think. I think Mikey just wants to nut. Oh well, yeah. In the 2012 series, they all have their own little fine girlfriend thing. Rafi would. Uh, Raphael yeah. would have the first kid Human? probably, or though. or crushes or something like that. Oh. Okay. Donatello is the thing for uh, uh, April. Leo's got Karai. Uh, and man, that's a sexy battle that they go at. Sure, Ooh. it's a children's cartoon, but yeah, hey, uh, Absolutely. What, whatever, Dylan. Sexy. Wow, <laughs> so jeez, uh-huh. get out of here. That uh, Mikey's got that girl with the weird wizard outfit that I was talking about, mm-hmm. and Raph. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Raph one, just masturbates. Well, angrily. <laughs> he doesn't have time for women. <laughs> angrily, yes. <laughs> oh, Mikey. Nah, it was a newer, Mikey? newer character. Hey. Uh, it's not Pee Wee. It's Pee Wee Herman. Whatever. No, wait, wait, wait. no I, it, it, the, the weirdest aspect about all this is just like the pure appeal of these characters is the thing that really, like, even me being as cynical as I am, like, I look at these characters and I'm like, yeah, but they're pretty fucking cool. Like, mm -hmm. like it's even hard to deny on a, any level. Like, you could show this shit to a child and they would immediately go like. Oh yeah, like I like the one with the blue bandana. Like, well, they're, yeah, they're so the characters are so well defined. Yes, um, and you know where they're coming from. Uh, yep. Leonardo is going to like adhere to the rules. He'll be straightforward. He is going to be there when you need him. Raphael is going to challenge authority. Uh, and, and then Mikey and, and Donnie are just ass. goofing off in the background. Uh, my Pretty favorite much. scene is in that first Turtles movie where Donatello's like, "I wonder what's going on," or if Splinter's okay, or anything. And Mikey's like, "That's it." Pizza's 30 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> it's 10% off. Yep. That's I'm right. like, huh. yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a great spot in Turtles 2 where they're, they start ref and Leonardo start arguing and they're just both like kitchen, kitchen. And yeah, that was always pork more on the, the Mikey Donnie pork side. Grind. If yes. I make a high, if I make a high fidelity thumbnail for this one, would you hang it in the drafty? Well, that's got, Alex has to pass that too. We can make him into that's Casey true. Jones. Alex will do it. I could put him in the back as Casey. Alex will do it. <laughs> but I, I, I actually, I have, I have, we, we were, we were talking about on the chat, which turtles we were. And I thought it would be interesting for our listeners to hear what we all decided on. Tom and I were pretty clear. Like yeah. no one had a debate there. Tom, you're Leonardo. You're like the yeah. dork. That's really good at leading. Thanks. Thanks guys. You're, a no, fearless, I, yeah, essentially you're a fearless like leader though. Right. You have the coolest Dork. <laughs> That's true. I feel the best. Mr. No Fun. Yeah. <laughs> you sit by the bathtub when you're there for hours straight at a time, though. <laughs> I, w I would, yeah. Thank you. But you got to stop doing it. I like that. Leonardo. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with okay. that. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm a dope that likes computers, so I'll go with Donnie. You're definitely Donnie, yeah. It's go, good with that. Behind that, yeah. yeah. Uh, so then the question was whether or not Josh was Mikey or Raph or whether I was Mikey or Raph. And to me, that's I, not even a debate. I okay. It really, well, well, Tom, what do you have to say oh, about this, this? So this will be interesting. Josh, Mikey, your ref. I agree with that. Okay. okay. So that's what it will be in my drawing. Because okay. <laughs> Raphael will say that. things that might offend certain politicians. So, yeah. Mikey <laughs> just wants to eat pizza. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and and that a is a characteristic time. I have. And certain iterations of ref aren't always so dour. You no, know? no, no, no. But I, no, ref is one of the coolest dudes. He turns yeah. into fucking Batman. I like, kind of look at myself yeah. as a Michelangelo Raphael hybrid. Mm -hmm. Not going to lie. Yeah, I've always you want kind of reach. thought that too, though. So mm -hmm. I do. we're kind of on the same level there. But I'm less Mikey, and you're probably more Mikey. I liked, so. I liked party man. When Donnie like you tries to be better. cool, everyone like calls him idiot and laughs at him. I'm like, I get Whoa, you. That's good. Like party. <laughs> I'm with you, dog. <laughs> and I'm a I'm a I'm a loner who just goes fuck society. <laughs> you just like put a trench coat on and you're just like running I, through New York. I secretly yeah. say that too. <laughs> you secretly oh, say it, but you're also a successful businessman. I keep oh. I keep it in my own brain, sir. <laughs> I can't. And <laughs> that would make Kate Splinter. Oh my! All I would right. love to hear her weird Asian accent. <laughs> I'd see her more as a Karai. Yeah, Shredder's um, daughter. Ooh, she isn't listening. Nope. All <laughs> right, guys. Well, hey, if you have any opinions on turtles, please send them to Josh. Or to April O'Neil. Send or, him to yes. April O'Neil. He'll, he'll pass him on to April O'Neil. I'll have Turtle Talk with I'll you. Her yeah. Tag April us in the post. April O'Neil probably had... I, I think when I uh, followed her on, on Twitter, she had like no no followers or whatever. So this was like early career stuff. Yeah, yeah, And you yeah. honestly just thought she was a fan of April O'Neil, which is why you followed her. I actually laughed she at probably it, that's all. Yeah. yeah. Nice. No one came out, though, as Casey Jones. Maybe they did. I shouldn't I get ahead of myself. She'll look like April O'Neil anyway. Okay, the only reason that... He drives that he train. He exists as to be a viable romantic High option for on cocaine. <laughs> He's not claustrophobic, though. He says that very clearly. That's uh, right. He never once looked at a dude. Yeah. His, that's from the oh, Traverse movie. Claustrophobic. Didn't age well. Didn't age well. <laughs> I never once looked at a dude. <laughs> Which of the uh, Raw Dogs members can we make Casey Jones? That's Nick. Nick is Casey Jones. Nick is Casey Jones. Nick, okay. Oh man! So he, all he's doing is talking about personas. He's slapping people with a hockey stick. I'll take it. I think. Uh, <laughs> 
Jamie's Baxter Stockman. Yep. Dom. He's Tyler Perry. Jamie has Tyler Perry. <laughs> Jamie's Krang. Tyler Perry. Yeah. Dom could be Krang. No, Dom would be um, the Rat, Rat King. King. Right, there you go. <laughs> yeah. That was good. <laughs> All right. There you go. Um, well, gentlemen, this has been a fun talk. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, where can they get a hold of us so they can talk about turtles to us? Uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram at Hair of the Dogcast. We are on Twitter at Hot Dogcast. Woo! Um, come to our Discord. If you reach out on any of those previous things we said, we'll get you our Discord link. That will be made Patreon exclusive eventually, but we just started it and we're having fun, so come join us. Join our discussions because there is a lot of that going on. It really on. has been a lot Please of fun. Please be cool and nice because we got a real fun community going, and I really love the vibe that's happening. Mm -hmm. And we can lay the band hammer down or the band bow staff, whatever we, we use. We will if the we have Halen. to, and we're not going to try to tell people what they can and cannot think. Only however, cool people listen to this podcast. However, I want to yeah. say Say like I've had such a positive experience, and I love everyone who's on it right now. So it's all just if you're be gonna awesome. be if you're gonna be chill, you're welcome there anytime. Absolutely, uh, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, check it out. I think we got a link somewhere. We'll probably post out a link. The the links expire, so if you don't jump on the okay. links when you see them, we probably won't post them too many more times because we want to keep the community what it is. But there's an opportunity to join now ahead of uh, the curve if you want. Tell you what, so yep. reach out to us. Reach out to us. Email us. We'll send it to you. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Tonight's going to be a good night. Yo, here's yeah. the green machine. Going to rock I the town without being All right. seen. Really cool. <laughs> Josh, do you know the ninja rap? Have you ever seen a turtle get down? Slam and jam to the new swing sound. I can't believe you're dancing with the moves. Uh, yo. <laughs> Dude, his legs are like tapping. Oh, well, I'm tapping. Have you ever seen I'm a ninja rapping. Get down. Go, ninja. Go, ninja. Go. go I made ninja, another go, funny. Ninja, go. <laughs> go, ninja. Go, ninja. All right. Go. They call Raphael go the away. leader in that song. Go yo. away. We'll see you next week. Bye. Let's get out of here. Word to your turtles. Blow it out your ass.